This program is sponsored by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978. www.donotshout.com Uh, before I begin, I need to read um, this notice is with City Council Committee as a whole. Meeting is posted in the event that a quorum of City Council is present at this standing committee meeting. If less than a quorum of the City Council is present, no committee of the whole meeting shall take place. If a quorum is present, any such meeting shall be restricted to the standing committee agenda items listed above. So thank you both for coming. Uh, as you're aware, I, I uh, submitted a petition on behalf of some uh, constituents that asked me to do so. And it's been a discussion in the 26 years I've been sitting here, um, off and on by, by whether it be a new counselor that comes in or a new request or um, a new break that somebody's concerned about and doesn't know um, what the possibilities are. They contact the city councilor and I know back in 2006, uh, Councilor Savatelli was really um, questioning it and got an opinion from the city solicitor, and I think that was still a little bit on the vague side. So um, I asked you to come in. Um, I know your response, Ray, on uh, the request for uh, recommendations on it. Um, I just want to correct one thing because I think it caused some confusion. Um, as long as I've been sitting here, one thing I would never, ever, ever do is suggest that we put money into private property. And the beginning of your comments, it states that the Department of Public Works is not equipped to perform the repairs, replacement, the privately owned water and sewer. So I just want to make it clear that although they might be private, owned pipes, they're also in the city street, which is public. All I meant by that was privately owned, the way the ordinance exists now, they are privately owned. That's all I meant by that. I just wanted to clear that up because I think there was a little confusion about it, so. <clears throat> all right. Um, I think there's still, there's an issue that, that arose with uh, a break on the city street, between the house and the house, the plot line, and the main, and the the break was in between there, from what I understand. So this homeowner needed to pay what was not even on his own property, but it was on city property only, and still had to pay for that for that um, correction. So I guess. There is a question as to whether we can do anything about this. Um, I did some checking and did find what some other communities do, but I, I want to hear from the two of you first why. I understand outside of, and I don't want to say outside of because it's important for the additional people you would need, what numbers are you using? How did you arrive at those numbers on breaks? and how are you determining that you need four extra people to take care of it? So um, I don't know which one of you would like to begin, but. I'll go first. Well, um, so specific to the cost, you'd have a foreman, a truck driver, equipment operator, and a laborer, so there's four, four people. So your salaries are gonna be approximately 200,000, and that's gonna be 200,000, then you add in the cost of benefits, which is gonna run about 35, 36%. So you'd be actually closer to 270 in total cost to the city. That's um, that would be if you had to hire somebody for this specifically. Plus, we'd have to have a crew, and you'd have to negotiate it with the union too. That's what Ray would have to talk about that. But 
<clears throat> you'd have to deal with that scenario. Now the numbers that we got that Ray submitted in his letter are off of safety valves actual report to us. Um, it went by year. So 2017 was 37, uh, 18 was 36, and there were 26 in 2019. Year to date there, we've got 16. And those are, those are ones that were insured, right? Correct. So there could be more than that? Yes. Yep. So in how many total insurances are in the city? Do you have any idea of that? Yes. Or is there any way you know that? Yes, that number we do have. There's 1,136 plans that are, you know, some of these combination plans, some are water, some are sewer, some are both. So there's an overlap in there. And how many, how many do we, connections do we have in the city? Um, on your water, you, you've got um, a, just over 12,000. There are 13,000 accounts, but you've got a bunch that are um, irrigation or lawn watering, account, you know, connections. So those are accounts, but they're not services because the service is connected off of the potable water going into the house. So, so generally, we have 1,000 people that are covered I mean, a th yeah, 1,000 homes, 1,100 homes covered out of 12,000? Right. Right. Okay. I mean, and anybody has the option to join into the program, and I think we were looking into even uh, going through your homeowner's insurance, which I think there is a clause that is available through that. There is, I talked to one of the insurance agents here in Lemonster <coughs> this afternoon, and there is a, an opportunity to get service line insurance. So if you wanted to buy that, as part of your homeowner's policy, you could. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you talk first, and then if I have any questions, I'll. I, uh, you know, I, Ray and I talked about it. I mean, I, um, while it's a nice idea, I, I can't support it because I don't think we can justify the expense based upon the fact that I'm submitting rate increase today because the, the consumption's down when we get into the second phase of um, my involvement in tonight's meeting, uh, we're off by 66,000 units of consumption. So um, it's difficult to say that you could absorb another expense when we're already, you know, having a, a tough time year to year making sure we do all the expenses and then um, wind up doing the capital projects that we need to do. So that's just my take on it, right? Uh, from my point of view, I was lucky enough to be here 30 years ago when we did try to attempt to do that part of the service connection. And we had probably 35 more people and it failed miserably. Didn't go good. Uh, because, like I've made point to a couple of people, is that once you start digging a water or sewer problem, most times it doesn't end up being A, on just city property or B, on just private property. You have to extend it further out, either A into the road or B back. So it creates a very gray area on how you proceed with that if you say from the property line out is the cities or from the property line in is the homeowners. So to me, that makes a lot of confusion and that's why we just made the water and sewer services similar to gas, electric, and phone. The homeowner owns them all. And that was, we rewrote that on this patent, I, it's probably like 30 years ago. So we did change it. It was a, a situation that we did address with much less talented men than we have now because the guys we have now are good, but it didn't go well. What if, I guess I don't like to, to go black or white. You know, we can or we can't. Um, is there an in-between? Is there something, and, and I'm, I'm gonna bring it up because we've had this discussion through the whole process of funding it. Are there gonna be people hired in DPW to take care of the rail trail? I, I have not. I mean, that's what that. seems to be the general consensus. So let, let's assume that they are. Is there something that could be done where those same people could be trained in both, if that were the case? If you had to hire, well, if you are, if, and I'm just, let, just going by the assumption that Somebody's taking care of the rail trails, and I'm going to assume that it's a DPW, as most. Well, I'm sure we'll aim that direction, but I mean, a guy mowing and trimming the rail trail isn't a backhoe operator. I mean, I don't see where the two, the two can't really be related. I, I'm not saying that they're similar, but they, they could be, 
Why couldn't they be, I guess? It's a union Why, shop. The, the, they bid for the jobs that they want. I can't say you're the rail trail guy mowing today, but when you're done, you're going to go dig a water service. I mean, I don't know how that would work. I guess it could be a discussion with the union body. But I, like you said, I'm not going to say it's not possible, but I mean, because we do a lot of impossible things on a daily basis. For I, I know, I know. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you don't have enough guys in the DPW, so that's why we're... I think we're having these discussions. Well, the good thing is we have better guys now. Better, but there's still, better equipment I mean, too. there's still so many hours they can work. I, I mean, whether they're better or they're many, I mean, it makes. It. We get it. You're really good too. How many places can you be at the same time? Three. <laughs> good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm also concerned because I, I did some, I made some phone calls just to try to get an idea um, whether anything was possible or not. Um, and out of the community, the 12 that I checked, about, a, about nine of them, the city is responsible, not the homeowner. Um, Fitchburg uh, pays, goes from the property line to the house. Uh, they take care of the street. Springfield is the homeowner. Lowell, the city takes care of it. Attleboro, the city takes care of it. Chicopee, the city takes care of it. Gardner is the homeowner. Medford, the city is responsible. And Medford is a community that we compare ourselves to all the time. We're doing it now with the police station. Them building went the same time. Um, Haverhill is the homeowner. And this is interesting. It's the homeowner, but the city has to do the work. They won't allow a private contractor to do the work. So things like that too, I think. Revere, it's the city, it's, um, but SOAR is homeowner. So a lot of the SOAR is, is kind of different. The city of Boston, and we know it's a different, it's a separate, it's a commission. It's not part of the city in, in, in that regard. It's, it's their own Did authority. you happen to ask them how they pay for it? I'm sorry? Did you happen to ask them how they pay for it? Who, all these others? Yes. I assumed it was part of their, like anything else that's paid out of DPW, if it's been ongoing. They said it's been there, been that way for, for years. Boston, they have, uh, the, the homeowners responsible from the main for the sewer, uh, but they provide grant money in their line item budget to help defray sewer costs if anybody has trouble. Um, and they're responsible for the water. It's only the sewer that they provide that for. So, I mean, that, that's, um, those are a lot of communities that are probably similar to ours um, or probably have less in their budgets than us, uh, uh, struggling a little more than us in some cases. But um, I, I guess I'm not comparing and saying we should do it because they do it, but I'm saying if they do it, we shouldn't be just shutting it down and saying, I don't, I don't support it because we need four guys, because we, it's going to cost us 200000 Gonna Let's look at what's affecting the community and see if there's something, an alternative we can come up with other than insurance that sometimes people can't afford either. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, um, I think we need to put it to rest. Well, another point we made was this, Sometimes when you get this far out into it, you, you use a services contract. So you would have a private contractor that would primarily be the guy that does that part of the connection. But now you're paying a premium on labor. You're paying 50% more because you're paying a labor of $50 an hour. So the cost is going to be quite a bit more if we choose that route without going with equipment and manpower and things of that nature. So, I mean, we did think a lot about it, and I was here when we did do it, and... Well, you're talking 30 years ago, though. Personally, I was happy to take that off our plates because of what we have to be responsible for. There's so much on the course of it. I mean, every day we say things that go on, you can't make this stuff up, that things that we are responsible for. So I'm, I'm just looking at... I know, but if, if when you look at how many times... I mean, how many water main breaks do you have a week anywhere? A lot less. 
I mean, it, it, yeah, but there's still a lot of water main breaks in the city that, or sore breaks, whatever they are, when, I mean, you see them all over the place. Yeah, we respond to those. See, but we're getting, they're getting fewer and fewer in between because those are the main lines that we're focusing on. We're the only community in Massachusetts that still does our own water main. And that's something we want to continue to do. So we have the ability, because we do it this way, we focus on the areas that A, dirty water, or B, older pipe, that's thin wall cast, that's prone to breaking. So that's what we focus on, and that's what we're planning to do some more of this year. So the breaks are getting few and few between, and we can focus on replacing more pipe. And I, and I know that there's possibilities with CDBG funding if, if somebody needs help. Yes. But there's it's always that, that family stuck in the middle. You know, you have the almost destitute to get the CDBG funding, you know, and then if you can afford the insurance, fine, but it's that fam those families that are in the middle that aren't quite poor enough to get the help and not rich enough to afford the, the insurance. So there's always that in between that, um, you know, you think about as well. I mean, Medford, I thought, was, was um, interesting because they also um, go to the main for commercial properties. They only go to the property line for, um, pro uh, for residential. And I thought that was a little bit different to, I don't know how you, you could really do that, but uh, I guess you can do anything. Yeah, that wouldn't be that tough to do. Yeah, yeah I was surprised at that. Uh, okay, um, other members of public service? Councilor Cormier? Thank you, Councilor Frieda. Um, gentlemen, just to put it in a more basic understanding, as a hypothetical, I'm a homeowner, something's happening, something's not draining properly, so I call the city and I say, listen, I don't know what's going on. So if you come out and you have to dig up the street to see where the problem is, is it your connection, is it my connection? My question becomes, if the city comes out, the DPW comes out, and they say, no, it's not us, it's you, now am I responsible for the cost of having you come out? No. Okay. okay. What we do is if we find that it is, in fact, a service and not a main line, we will temporarily hook you up There's with water page. and let you know that <clears throat> you have X amount of days to buy city ordinance, keep your water service in proper working order. Okay. That's an ordinance. All right, so in that, in, in my same hypothetical, then I now have the insurance. Right. So once you guys come out, you take a look and you say, hey, it's not us, it's you, we'll temporarily fix you, then I can call somebody, who, a contractor for the insurance carrier, and they'll come out and they take it over from there. Right, yes. Right. Okay, so that was, that's my biggest concern. In the event of an emergency, I don't want to see a homeowner come out, not know what to do, contact you guys, and then now all of a sudden, the homeowner is now responsible for also paying the DPW for, for having you come out and check. No, we will never leave anybody hanging like that. We always make sure that they at least have temporary water. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. How's the yeah, oh, Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, kind of put something to bed or, you know, ask a question that's been that's been mentioned many times um, in your all your experience that you've had with these types of breaks is there any correlation between uh, them happening on a busy road with you know tens of thousands of car trips a day or quiet cul-de-sacs is, is there any difference in numbers that you've found I'll be honest with you the the age of old iron you see iron pipe back in the day and it's most of them are 80 90 100 years old I haven't seen it happen in one area more than another. It's yeah. just you've got your money's worth out of that 100-year-old piece of iron pipe that's A, in rust, B, in water, and corrodes. Because, yeah. you know, I, I mentioned at the last meeting, you know, my neighborhood's not all that old. We've had a lot of breaks, um, both in the street and people's mains, and I think a lot of it was part of how everything was installed. Well, I don't it was, think it, it was... It was the condition of the pipe, too. Right. Because they cut corners on the pipe from the 
50s and 60s, they used thinner wall casts because they needed the iron. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we see those areas are more prone to needing to be replaced. Okay. So there is no correlation, then, between a I, busy street and a non-busy? Correct me, I don't see it. I, th mm. I think it's unilateral across the board Okay. for a 100-year-old piece of pipe. And can you also, can you speak about, um, I'm sure you know the water rates in Lemonster versus other parts of the state. We do. Wh where do we rank? I mean... Bottom. You're in, you're in the lower third. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a, a, a set of rates that there's two sets of rates, one's <coughs> just water and one's water and sewer combined. There are a few communities that are lower in water, um, a couple of them up, one's by the coast, Springfield's another one, um, but then you look at sewer and we're the next to lowest as far as sewer goes amongst all the ones that I looked at. <coughs> Excuse me. So. I can um, give you documentation on that. Right, I, and I will. I'm going to give you a handout right. um, a little bit later. Right. So. Well, be, you know, my thing is, is I, you know, I know that, you know, <coughs> people would have to buy an insurance policy in Lemonster, but people have to understand that our rates are also a lot cheaper here as well. You know, I, I'm sure in some of these other communities that, you know, were mentioned, their rates are a lot higher. You know, they're they're a lot higher than what we're paying here. So. You know, that's, that's a factor, too, you know, and I, I just, um, you know, just wanted to mention that. that you You'll know, see some I, that are double. I'm sorry? At least double. Right, right. Some so people I mean, are, are, are double what we're double. So if we were to pass such an ordinance, which we have a right to, I mean, which we have the authority to do as a city council, you'd either have to, you'd be, you'd be forced to raise the rates and hire people to, um, to cover these costs because we can't, we can't spend money without a revenue stream. That's illegal. So you'd either be raising the rates to reflect the costs, or you'd be cutting something. So what, what is there to cut? I mean, we're going to stop, you know, the replacement of pipes in the street and, uh, you know, let that go? I mean, what, what would we do? What, what would you do if we passed this? Shift on the fly. We would make it work, however, whatever direction we pick. I mean, we do it all the time. But it would be one or the other. Yeah. Hire the men, raise the rates. Yes. Or, or cut or make cuts to how much pipe we replace in our streets. You'd have to raise the rate either year. way. And if you hire a services contractor, that would be probably more because of what you have to pay. You have to pay wage rate. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carson Frieda. Um, I just want to, especially for the public, um, explain a couple of things here or make confirm a couple of things. So <clears throat> one term, common sewer, is the line out in the street that services all of the homes, correct? Yes, sir. What we're really talking about tonight is lateral connection, right. which is an a lateral connection will only service that <coughs> one home. And, and oftentimes, on most all occasions, the lateral traverses not only the private property, but some public property as well to get to the common sewer. Correct? Correct? All right. So when that lateral connection enters the common sewer, there's a T or a, or a, a junction there where that obviously needs to happen in order to make the system work, right? Correct. So it, it, it really is all or nothing, isn't it? Because if you only service, if the, if the, public, if the public is responsible for the portion of the lateral that's on their property, doesn't that create sort of an unworkable situation for you guys? In the sense that we're talking about old pipes in a lot of these instances, correct? Correct. So you, I think you told me before, Ray, that you don't really know until someone starts digging really what the, pro what the whole problem is, right? In a sewer, it's generally a cave-in because they used to use old clay that has a lifespan. Fortunately for a lot of us, it's right around 100 years now. I mean, that's good value. Uh, the, the pipe they use now is a PVC pipe that is scheduled 35 or 40. It's very strong. Roots can't get into it, and it, and it guards against those types of failures. But you, until you get out there and start digging, you, you don't know if you have a problem on the public portion of the lateral, the private portion of the lateral, or both, correct? Correct. So, so if, you, if we passed this, and we only protected the homeowner for the public portion of the lateral, that doesn't mean that there isn't gonna be a necessity to get another crew in there 
once somebody's already dug and deal with the private portion of it, <clears throat> correct? That's where the gray comes in. So, so let, me, let me ask you this as well. If you're dealing with a very old pipe, and let's say, that, let's say it's clear that it collapsed on the public side, and you're looking at a 100-year-old system, does it make any sense at all not to fix the whole lateral once you start digging in the public side? Not to me. So, Just mobilization of equipment alone costs a lot of money. And we always recommend, once you're there on the problem, you might as well do the whole thing, as we tell homeowners. So, so it seemed to me that this, to make this workable, it would have to be either all or nothing. In other words, the city is responsible for the entire lateral uh, and the common sewer system. In other words, all of these connections, as well as the main system, or we go with what we've got now, which it sounds like other communities do as well, and the homeowner is responsible for the lateral connection, which is the pipe that services them, whether it's on public or private property or both, and the city's responsible for the common sewer, correct? Yes. All right. Thanks. That's it? Yep, all set. Councilor Angelini? Thank you, Council. Uh, gentlemen, uh, taking, expounding a little bit on what uh, the President uh, asked you earlier, fortunately, when I was a younger man, much younger actually, I worked on a sewer crew for a number of months <clears throat> and eventually ended up working with engineers doing pressure testing of manholes and mandrel testing of sewer lines. So I've seen collapse pipe and where it meets the common sewer in the road. <clears throat> and oftentimes, correct me if I'm wrong, the layout of a roadway isn't, doesn't end where the sidewalk ends. It may be pr uh, city property on 10 feet on one side of the street, five feet on the other side of the street. Am I correct in that correct. assumption? So if we were to dig and we determine the pipe is broke five or seven feet from where it's connected to the common sewer, would we essentially need a survey crew to determine whose property it's on? If you wanted to be absolutely certain, what you see, and you probably know, you have 30, 40, 50 foot road layouts. Sometimes the layout of the road is in the center of that. Sometimes it's shifted eight to 10, four to five feet either way mm -hmm. to make it work best. So yeah, you would, you, would, you would probably at some point in time need a survey crew to determine public to private property. All right. And when you, when you folks dig up a road to replace a common sewer that's in the street, a main, what do you do with those laterals as you expose them? If they're if they damaged or <clears throat> if you dam if you had a damaged one you'd want to put in you put in the plastic repair piece with a plastic T Y and then connect it with a Franco coupling. Okay, so so you guys take care of that <coughs> when you're putting right. in the new the new sewer replacement. But what we do now is we line the sewer, so we <coughs> we we throw a, um, a polyurethane liner down there. We apply heat to it. It cures, and then a robot cuts that service out. So, so the TY or T remains as is in that situation. All right, I understand. So even if, if we had to hire four men at the expenses that were noted, <clears throat> that's not even taken into consideration the legacy cost of those employees, the retirement, health insurance, that's, you see, that, that cost continues well, even after they retire, does it not? It does. Yep. All right, thank you, gentlemen. How's that, Council? Council Fickley. Council Feckley? Um, Ray, I'm sorry if I missed it, but did you say how many breaks there there have been like this year and the year before? The last three years, <coughs> 100. 100, so, and that was the lateral? The Either water or sewer or a combination of both. Okay, that the homeowner was responsible for? The homeowner or the insurance company. Okay, so, so in the two years? I don't know, did you hear us mention that 1,100 policies are yeah, I heard, okay. yeah, I didn't hear that tonight, but I, I did know about that. So 100 for both years or 100? For the last three. For the last three years, yes. 100 total. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Councilor Lachelle for Zeppelin. Yeah, thank you very much. So, Ray, how much is the insurance policy annually? It's, I think it's 67, 74.88 per water and 99 for sewer. So it's 174.84 for the year. And that's for both, okay. It's good. for both. And I hate to have the insurance company hear me, but once they replace, i tell you, this thing worked out great. They were super nuts, they paid for the whole thing, mm -hmm. up to 5,000. Mm -hmm. We recommend to people that you don't need that insurance anymore. 
after they've had a break fixed. Correct. Okay, good. It's all brand new, and they don't. They, chances of it feeling again, they got a hundred years out of it. Okay, no, that's really. I mean, that is good to know. So if you pay for it a couple of years, you get it fixed, and then you're good. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it for the rest of it. It really oh. is a great policy. That at first we were very skeptical of it, but it's gone so slick, and mm -hmm. a lot of people have called to thank us for it. And it's not really us. We don't even really endorse it. Yeah. When they ask, we just tell them this is available to you. So. Well, that was my next question. So if a homeowner was interested in getting that insurance, do they call you? Do they call the DPW? They have. And our guys have pamphlets on their vehicles. When they okay. go out, they give them to them. Okay. All right. That's great. And I understand because we've had this conversation earlier, you know, $174 annually is a lot of money for some homeowners. So, you know, if we, however this goes, we can maybe put our heads together and find a way to assist, you know, those people who, um, you know, need some help in affording that policy. So thank you. Councilor Hyden, did you have? Do we have a quick minute to have, uh, to get a couple, of, see if there's anyone in the audience? If you, if you'd like. All right, um, I don't want to spend too much time, but I do, I don't know who might be interested in speaking, so if you do come to the mic and state your name and address, please. Good evening, John DeChico, uh, 193 North Main Street in Lemonster. Back again on this subject. Uh, first, I want to start off by thanking all the councilors for making this uh, early meeting to hear the comments from our DPW. I want to also recognize and thank uh, both gentlemen from the DPW for their thorough uh, you know, information to you folks to give you something to work from. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert on any of this. Uh, I can only relate to my own personal experience as a homeowner, as a rate payer. Uh, what happened to me two years ago was what, actually I'm the person that Councilor Frieda was referring to with the sewer break. Uh, the entire failure was on city property. Uh, didn't know that until I paid for a rotor rooter company to come in and put a camera down the line uh, attempt to route the line initially, which was about $500, and then put a camera down the line, another $500, to dis only to discover that the break was right at the sidewalk and right in the street. And so $1,000 right there, just to discover that it wasn't technically, I guess you could say, my problem. It was the city's, it should have been the city's problem. And that's why I feel this present ordinance, which is almost 30 years old now, it needs another look at. Uh, I really do believe, and I understand fully that in the current situation, uh, our DPW is stretched way beyond its limits. Uh, I am an advocate for, frankly, rebuilding that department because I feel that while they do a tremendous amount of work in the city, they are absolutely understaffed. And irregardless of this issue, they're understaffed to begin with. But I do believe that they do have the expertise, as indicated by the director, to handle this. Uh, they have the expertise. They may not have the bodies right now, but they certainly have the expertise because they work with these lines all the time. We're not talking about a private contractor coming in and kind of feeling their way through the process if there's an issue out in the street. It's pretty easy to find something on somebody's property today and even in the street because technology has come a long way in 30 years and any company coming in, be it private or the city, has the capability to simply put a camera down those lines, whether it's water or sewer, and find out and discover where the break actually is. So it's not that difficult to determine. We're not talking about having to dig up the entire road any longer and, and hopefully find it on the first go around. This can be found pretty readily because it was done on my property. I saw it, I was standing right there when it happened. When you pull a permit to get that work done in the city, it is properly inspected by the water department. They are right there on the scene from the time that road is dug up to the time it's put back together again. I, again, I'm not trying to challenge the comments from these gentlemen, but going back to Councillor Cormier's uh, question about, you know, what's the impact on some of the more heavily traveled roads, one of which I live on, a Route 12, which sees continuous you know, pounding from the fire department, which is necessary, ambulance service, and notwithstanding all the just regular traffic that goes through that street. And if it were not a determination between the, the road usage, 
then the road surfaces would last equally as long on, on my road, on Route 12, which hasn't been resurfaced in 25 years now and is in desperate need of resurfacing, compared to somebody on a cul-de-sac where they repave the road and I'm sure it lasts a lot longer than 25 years before they have to replace it. Likewise, the standards by which they had to put the street back together again in front of my house were certainly different than I believe what's happening on side streets in that they had to, they could not backfill using the, the material that has been literally sitting in the road for God knows how many years, well over 100 years. Instead, the DPW required that they had, that the private contractor had to use what's called flowable fill, which is basically a concrete slurry mixture. Okay. And that's about 25 feet deep in the road. So if that connection has to be repaired again, you can imagine the cost that I would have to assume, because now they'd have to jackhammer 25 feet of material to get down to that connection point. Okay. So you can only imagine what the cost would be. Now, hopefully, I will never have to do that in my lifetime. But the next homeowner of that property might be a different story. And I'm only striving to try to get some kind of level of equity. Of course, there's an expense to anything that you take on. You have the difficult job, of course, of deciding what, you know, what gets jettisoned, if you will, or what gets added to the budget for the city and for a particular department. But I don't think it's an either or, personally. I really think it's high time that we, you folks, on behalf of all the residents, all the ratepayers, more importantly, take a, a stab at this, and it doesn't have to be an all or nothing proposition. It can be somewhere, I think, in between. You know, the, 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 the emphasis of this insurance policy is wonderful. I'm not saying that it's overpriced for what they offer, but there are limits to it, folks, okay? They only cover $5,000 for sewer repairs. $5,000. My cost was $10,000, okay? So I still would have had to come up with $5,000 if I had the policy, which unfortunately I didn't at the time. So the whole thing was on me. Shame on me, I guess. But I wasn't aware of the policy, and I've lived in this city my entire life. Okay? I think it was Councilor Cormier again at the last meeting stated that, you know, he receives a reminder that this policy is available uh, through the mail every time he gets his water bill. Well, I pay it online, and you don't get that information online. So I, that's why I was unaware of it. Okay? So there's certainly a divide, in the, I'm sure, in the community of ratepayers. Some people know about it because they're, getting, they're paying the old-fashioned way, if you will, and some people are paying the newer way and don't know about it. I happen to be stuck in that, that spot. You know, again, my fault. I certainly took the insurance out since then, and maybe, as the director said, I'll never have to use it in my lifetime. Probably not because we also had our water mains re uh, replaced 25 years ago when the, before the road was resurfaced and the state was doing the project, the private contractor offered to everybody on the street if you wanted to upgrade your water service, which we, we chose to do. It cost us $2,000 for each household, but it was well worth it, certainly compared to the cost of what it would be if we had to replace those iron pipes today. So we're safe, I guess you could say. So I'm really not here, again, advocating for myself because I've already had to put the money out. My family has put the money out on our properties. We made that investment, you know, the hard way. But I am advocating for everybody who's a ratepayer in the city. I'm advocating also for the people in the city who are ratepayers who are commercial people. They don't have the option to buy any insurance like this. They might through their own private insurance company, but they don't get this kind of a rate, certainly, offered to them. And just recently, right on North Main Street, just down the street from my home, right up beyond Water Tower Plaza, Workers Credit Union had some kind of a major failure. I assume it was their sewer system because they had to put porta potties in the back of their building for their employees for about a week and a half. And they were digging in the street, digging on their property, all over the place. So, you know, again, equity here, folks. You know, making our community appealable to everybody. You know, making it affordable for everybody to do business in the community is important. And this is the really, if you get right down to it, the way I see it, this is the only infrastructural piece in this entire city that the city basically doesn't worry about insuring. We insure the building that we're sitting, standing in and sitting in tonight. We insure all our other public properties that belong to the residents of this community. But yet we don't, somehow we don't see the need to insure our infrastructure. One of the most important pieces of this community 
We can't, as, as the director stated, you can't live in your house if you don't have portable water. You can't live in your house if you don't have a sewer line that's functioning. I was lucky enough, I lived next door to my parents. When my sewer line failed and it took about three days to get it corrected, you know, I could go next door and use the bathroom or the shower or whatever. Everybody can't do that. What are they gonna do? They have to go in a hotel, not covered by the policy, okay? Policy only covers repair work, that's it. $10,000 for water, $5,000 for sewer. <laughs> so those are some of the considerations I hope you'll make. It is, as the counselor said, this is not really a black and white issue. You know, I think after almost 30 years, you need to put your thinking caps on, you need to maybe step back a little bit, do more consultation with the people who actually operate our system here in the city and see if there is in some way that you can give some relief and more importantly, spread the equitable burden of these additional costs on everybody. If we have to add people to the payroll to do this job right, and I believe, they're, again, they're very capable of doing that, then that small increase spread out amongst everyone who's a rate payer. You know, we only have 12,000 water connections in the city. As, as they stated, I don't know how many sewer connections we have. Seems awful low to me, but that may be the case. Uh, you know, we're a city of what, over 40,000 people? And whereas everybody doesn't live in a single family home, there's certainly apartment buildings, condos, what have you. Uh, I, I just think we can do better by, our, by, our, by your constituents, my fellow citizens, our fellow ratepayers. I think, again, you know, before you just say up or down, I think there has to be somewhere in between. Maybe the city can find a way. If this insurance company is willing to take that liability to sell a policy, frankly, very cheaply to the residents, I can't imagine that you couldn't find an insurance company that would help you know, indemnify the city's liability for your side of the, 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 you know, the puzzle, if you will, the street side. And again, that insurance plan would be, the cost of it would be borne by everybody, all the ratepayers, not just some. Okay? And it would, protect the, it would protect the city, it would protect the ratepayers. You know, as far as making connections, it's, it's not an all or nothing, folks, okay? It's not an all or nothing going from the street right to the home because I had replaced my sewer line. So when that break occurred between my connection at the sidewalk and the city's connection, technically, it was, I didn't have to dig up my yard, okay? Didn't have to do, dig up anything. And again, those things can now be pinpointed. We have the technology available. The city certainly has that technology. They lay water lines all the time. They save the city a great deal of money, and you know the mayor is frequently Mr. touting Mr. the fact. Yes, I'm um, sorry. I don't mind. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but no, we do have a I number understand. of other public hearings right. this evening. I understand. And it's getting a bit repetitive, yeah. actually. I understand. Thank if you. If you have something else, please just wrap it no, up. Just thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Again, thank you for your attendance. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming and enlightening the council members and trying to give them some idea of how maybe this can be rectified. Again, good evening. Thank you. Real quickly, is there anyone else that has um, any comment for the council? <coughs> Peter Latches, 22 DeMassa Drive. This thing has been bothering me ever since I became a homeowner, how to, how to protect myself. And I've never liked the idea that I pay for uh, a problem that's in the street. So I'm glad that this has been brought up. Um, the thing of it is I noticed, and I'm not really sure on all these facts, it says that the insurance is 175 for water and sewer services. And there were 13, well, I guess they brought up 1,100 or 1,300 existing policies and, in th and, and, re and, and have made repairs over the past three years on the neighborhood of totaling $141,000. So in three years, if you divide that by three, you're coming up with the insurance company made, um, did $45,000 worth of repair and they sold policies to uh, 1,100 people at 175 or less, and they made a profit. So, expanding on what the last speaker said, if you insured, if everybody blanketed it with an insurance policy, 
that would kind of alleviate the problem, I think, that you could get insurance for every homeowner. And I don't know if you extend it. I know condos are, are not on it and other, other kind of buildings are 300 feet that have water and sewer pipes. But I, I think it's a good thing to talk about and really think if you can really get the burden off the, the city wanted to get rid of the burden of paying that money and they flipped it onto the homeowner. And if there's only 33 breaks a year and the policy makes money, insurance, the insurance makes money on so few breaks, then certainly at a low cost, we should be able to insure the whole city. I hope it's looked at because it certainly aggravates. And I know if a person is at home and all of a sudden you get a break in the street and you get a $6,000 bill, it's a huge amount of taxes for one person. That's what it is. So I hope you really all look at it because it's really a, a thing that I think we can help so few people that are affected by so much money. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the council regarding this issue? <clears throat> okay, if not, thank you. Closing hearing. Okay, I guess we'll go to a 634 hearing with legal affairs. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. This is a public hearing. <clears throat> Petition 40-20, Roger Brooks, DPW Water and Sewer Manager, request to amend Chapter 21, Article 2, Section 21-11.1 of the Lemonster City Ordinance as follows. Chapter 21, Article 2, Section 21-11.1 of the Revised Ordinance entitled Water User Rate Schedule by deleting the provision for metered rates within and outside the city and inserting the following rates in its place. Metered rates per unit, four units and over, effective March 1st, 2020. Within city, $4 per unit. Outside the city, $5.03 <coughs> per unit. Metered rates per unit, four units and over, effective March 1st, 2021, within city, $4.15 per unit. Outside the city, $5.18 per unit. Section 21-11.1, water user rate schedule. The water user rate schedule for residential and industrial use shall be as follows. Effective minimum water charge per quarter, five eighths of an inch meter, $25, three quarter inch meter, $25, one inch meter, $30. One and a half inch meter, $30. Two inch meter, $30. Three inch meter, $35. Four inch meter, $35. Six inch meter, $45. Eight inch meter, $45. Out of city, $45. And, uh, you guys don't mind introducing yourselves again. Appreciate it. Tom Raymond Machine, Director of Public Works. Uh, Roger Brooks, Business Manager, Water and Sewer. Okay, Roger, you want to just um, <clears throat> maybe give us a quick summary of what's going on? Sure. Um, I can speak to both of these. You want to do them both, or just which one are we on first? Uh, we're on. Um, 40-20, let, uh, let me inquire of the president if it makes sense to do them together. I suppose if we're gonna do them both together though, you should, I'll, I'll you read, should read the other hearing yeah. notice. I, I don't, I don't oh, does sorry. any council have any objection to that? All okay, right, so well, okay. let me, Mr. Let me read Chair, the agenda. Mr. Chair, if you just read the notice. Okay, uh, also on the agenda, this one is scheduled for 6.37 p.m. Petition 39-20. Roger Brooks, DPW Water and Sewer Manager, request to amend Chapter 21, Article 3, Section 21-22.3 of the Lemister City Ordinance as follows. Um, user class residential includes low strength industrial as of March 1st, 2020. Factor metered water unit 100 cubic feet, rate $4.56. User class minimum sewer charge per quarter, rate $25.
Lunenburg, as of March 1st, 2020, per intermunicipal agreement dated June 24th, 1999. Metered water, 100 cubic feet. The rate, $5.18. Out of city, as of March 1st, 2020, metered water, 100 cubic feet. The rate is $8.83. As of March 1st, 2021, the rate would be $9.97. Okay. Thank John, you, Councilor. John, just point. Um, you missed the as of March 1, 2021 rates for residential in low industrial water, um, which is 470 uh, per unit. And uh, the Lunenburg as of March 1, 2021 is 532. Just oh, want to I'm make sorry. sure we covered it all. Yep. That's all right. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the purpose of the um, rate adjustments, uh, twofold. Number one, uh, the, the second set of information that I gave you gives you an idea of how much of a reduction we've got in consumption over the um, past calendar year. Um, we're off by 66,000 units, 66,000 units uh, on <clears throat> both uh, on the water, the uh, wastewater, not quite so much, um, but the, the biggest issue that we're um, gonna face going forward is the um, lack of ability to continue to do these capital projects that we talked about earlier. Um, we have in the back of the first packet that I sent you, there are two um, sheets reflecting rates. One rate it was um, obtained by Mark Pimerini down the office. And <clears throat> the second one I got from a waterworks person that I know. So it gives you an idea of what other communities are paying as we speak. You know, you look at both, um, both sheets. As you can see um, on the top on the top sheet, um, we're again probably in the bottom third right now as to uh, water rates. The um, sewer rate uh, we are the second lowest of all the communities. Um, a lot of things are going on. We've just finished a three-year inspection of the sewer system. You've heard us talk about I and I over the years. Um, we separated all of our combination manholes. Uh, going through the I and I study, there are a number of areas that need help in terms of fixing the sewer line. Uh, groundwater is getting into the system, and we need to address that. So, <clears throat> a couple of. Um, Issues with that are gonna be the capital money necessary to do it. Um, we get uh, probably 60 to $80 a foot to reline some of the pipe, and it's gonna take uh, quite a bit of money to reline the sections that we're looking at. We relined all of North Lemonster from North Street up, and we still have issues. So a lot of this is gonna to fall to homeowners to correct issues, whether they be some pumps pumping water from their basement into the sewer system, um, roof drains or uh, what we were talking about earlier, bad laterals. Um, so we are gonna camera the, the system again and take a look at what the status is of that. But I can tell you that the groundwater influence in the sewer system is pretty significant. In calendar year 18, <coughs> the um, November was the, the worst month we had in, in my entire time here. Uh, we had 67 inches of rain during calendar year 2018. Um, I think it's a little bit of a reflection of climate change. I, it's, it's never been that bad. Um, some of the storms we have are of greater intensity, and you see a greater intensity in the volume that goes to the wastewater plant. Um, in terms of water, um, the water projects that we looked at um, that are on the back of the packet, um, there are four streets or four streets that our crew is gonna do. Um, as Ray indicated earlier, we try and address the areas where people are having dirty water complaints, uh, outdated or, or broken pipes that we have to go back frequently for. Uh, so those four streets that are on there uh, as we speak 
of the priority for our crew down the DPW. Um, there are also streets at Lindell Ave from West Street over to the Miriam Ave intersection that needs to be addressed. It's uh, kind of a chronic location for us and we, we need to fix that before we continue on out into the system. Um, in addition to that, um, if you look at the sewer projects, we're, we're down to a couple of really difficult projects. The one under the railroad over off of Crawford Street is gonna be expensive. It's gonna be a six to $700,000 project. You have to sleeve the carrying pipe inside a, a large diameter steel pipe in order to get approval from the railroad. So the railroad inspects the project, it gives it their approval, and then we can move forward with it. Um, other than that, we listed some projects. Um, <clears throat> one thing, we, we came in here in um, June of last year on the wastewater plant upgrade. We're doing aeration and we're gonna do the primary and secondary clarifiers. That's the last major capital project that has to be done at the wastewater plant. Um, we are hoping to get favorable treatment on some nutrient removal financial assistance. Um, the O'Leary Bill financed projects at 0%. They've told me they're gonna look at the extent to which we qualify. There are two aspects to this upgrade. One is the primary and secondary clarifiers, and the second aspect of it is the aeration. So depending on how they treat us on that, a portion of this I expect to be at 0%. So the 14 cents of the principal that we're gonna have to deal with is in this rate increase. There is no interest expense built into this. As I said back then, there were um, three bonds that matured over the last year. So that was the equivalent of $300,000 in debt service. So we're, <coughs> we're hoping to uh, minimize the impact on ratepayers from that from this point on. Um, Just trying to think of any other questions that you might have that I can answer before we open it up. Um, no Town, we are just finishing this week with a new technology. It's called an ActaFlow process. The ActaFlow process is enhanced um, clarification. Um, basically, you've got two clarifiers at the head of the plant. Two years ago, when we had a really intense amount of total organics coming in the raw water. Um, it created problems for us with the disinfection byproduct rule. We had to send out notices to people. Um, it was because of the raw water coming into the plant that created that issue. This technology will eliminate that. And the beauty of the technology is you can turn it on, you can turn it off. You don't have to run it all the time. So it's not gonna be an ongoing cost. It'll be a cost when just the raw water intake has total organics that are high. The water that we just finished because of the technology and everything is in and the organics are low was absolutely tremendous. I don't know that I've ever seen water come out of our plants to this extent. It was absolutely perfect. So it was really encouraging to see that the upgrades we've done have been working. We want to enhance that. In addition, there's a new issue out in the public. PFAS is what they call it. Um, it's chemicals that don't break down. And this technology that we're gonna add will take that out of the uh, raw water stream. So that's a, a, an added benefit that's pretty significant, quite honestly. Um, and other than that, <clears throat> I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, we had applied for and have been approved for a water SRF loan to do that work. Um, it's gonna be between six and a half, seven million dollars. Um, again, we're gonna see where we are after this fiscal year before we come back down and um, adjust any rates for debt service on that. I think we can work through what is before you tonight and we're saving some money on electricity. We've cut back on electrical costs at all of our facilities. Um, so those are the, the highlights um, as far as uh, process and buildings and everything else. It's raised 
pointing out to me, at the bottom of um, the capital projects page, we've added in the equipment that we really are in desperate need of, and it's some of it's gotten expensive. It's almost as expensive as a, a fire truck. It's uh, the vector, the big machine that goes out and cleans the, the mains. As we talked about the common sewers, we go out and we jet and vac those mains to keep them clean so they don't build up and, and create backups for residences. Um, that's a half a million dollars by itself. And uh, we, we just don't have the money in place as Roger, we Roger, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's yeah. seven, so we have to start the meeting. Okay. And, uh, we'll, we'll be back to you in a minute. Okay. Join in, uh, salute the flag. <laughs> flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'll take a roll call of the city council, starting with Councilor Frieda. Present. Councilor Dombrowski. Present. Councilor Shalafo Zeffa. Present. Councilor Feckley. Present. Councilor Angelini. Present. Councilor Ardinger. Present. Councilor Pauline Cormier. Present. Councilor David Cormier. Present. And I'm present as well. All nine councilors are present. Does the chairman of records uh, have anything to report? I do, Mr. President. I have the minutes of the city council meeting of February 10th. 2020, and I find them to be in order and ask that they be placed on file. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to recess. Motion for a recess. Seconded. All in favor? We're in recess. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Oh, sure. Uh, you may proceed. Uh, pretty much done. Uh, we just completed the dam at Morse, um, required an upgrade uh, under the inspection of DCR. Um, so the last, this last round of free cash, when it comes down, is going to have the final payment on that. We did not bond that, so there's no bond debt. We did in what they call a state house note. It's an internal borrowing. Um, it saved the city a significant amount of money, and um, we would like to continue to do that type of project going forward. So um, some of the other work that's that's in here on your sheets in terms of the water tanks. Um, we just had a water tank inspection as part of the sanitary survey, and they're gonna need some work. Now, the number that they have and what we're gonna have to do are two different things, but it, it came in at just over two and a half million dollars to do all the tank work, upgrades, safety uh, installations, and repainting and things like that. So it's, it's um, one of the things that we're gonna have to look at going forward to meet DEP's requirements. So with that, take questions, anybody has a question? Let me, uh, let me ask you, if, if the rate increase is passed, where would that um, put the city as far as the comparisons with other cities and towns? Um, if you put the $4 on the water rate, um, I'm just looking to see if there's anybody that we would It, it keeps it, the, uh, the ones on the top sheet doesn't change at all. <clears throat> and that's for, that'll be for fiscal year 2021. Um, and if you look, the second sheet is strictly water users. So the, the water users, you can see, it, it depends. They look at quarterly charge. Some communities have significant quarterly or monthly charges, like Fitchburg charges everything monthly. Um, most communities on this sheet are quarterly. If you look at the quarterly charge, they, they factor in everything between your minimum charge and your monthly charge, the $20 that we're paying now, plus the three, three units for, um, that are free as part of the service. So we're only charging for two service, two units of water consumption. So the short answer to, to your <coughs> question is, most of these aren't gonna change much at all. If, it, if at all. And that's on the sewer side as well? That's on the water side. On the sewer side, we're the second lowest on the sheet, at the top sheet you have. Yeah. We're the second lowest. And if you go to the 450, um, there are, <clears throat> matter of fact, there's nobody <coughs> under $5 <laughs> on that entire sheet. So everybody else is $5 or greater. Um, we're gonna go to, um, Two rates that we in included here, 456, 470. So there's only one community lower than we are out of that group. And I, 
I think you had indicated that um, one of the major reasons for the increase is consumption is down? Consumption is down significantly on water, not so much on sewer. But on, <coughs> on sewer, we're trying to do a lot of relining, and that vector is half a million dollars. A lot of the equipment that we're using now is it's newer, the technology is better, but it's more expensive. And have you been able to identify um, the factors of why consumption's down on the water? Just conservation, some of it's conservation, some of it's, you know, people um, just just paying more attention to what they what they do. Um, last year was it was wet in the spring. I don't think the spring flows were quite as um, substantial as they might have been in other years. So a lot of it's to do with rainfall too. You got, you know, last year, calendar year 2019 was 50, just over 53 inches. Now normal rainfall around here was approximately 46 inches. Um, so you've had two years back to back of relatively high, um, 14%, 15% in 19, and almost a 50% increase in 2018. So it's impacted us quite a bit. You'd be surprised how much lawn watering <coughs> bins. I mean, <coughs> back when, when we were using so much water, we were going through specific homes that I don't exactly remember the, the addresses. They were using 50,000 <coughs> gallons a month to water their lawn. <coughs> so you had a thousand mines. But <clears throat> that was during the drought, so we did some checking. But when it rains, they don't water as much. One thing I can say in response to your question, Counselor, is that when I started in, in 96, we were using approximately 2 million units of water a year. And we're down to 1.4 million. So you've had a 30% reduction in consumption over the past 20 years. A lot of it's to do, you know, the washing machines, technology is much better. Um, low flow toilets, low f the, the shower heads and everything. So, and people, you know, you, you convert your bathroom or whatever, that's a savings. You do washing machine gets changed out. All of those things factor into it. In the, uh, the groundwater influence in the sewer system, um, if you could just, you know, what steps have been, are we taking to combat or, or try to remedy that? Um, <clears throat> so, as Ray had indicated earlier, we, we've had bids over the years with a company called Insituform that take a cured-in-place process. Do you actually install a resin-based um, fiber or fabric into the into the main, they heat it, it adheres to the clay pipe, and then they cool it, and then it, it forms both a structural and a, a new interior to the um, sewer pipe. So the carrying pipe is significantly stronger than with clay, and it's also um, gonna take out the joints that leak. Now, let's say we've got some services in this city that we don't even have records of. They put them in in the 1870s. Um, the joints, I'm sure, are, are Atrocious. We found it both in when we did the Adams and Cotton Street project, the Whitney Street project, and when we did North Lemonster. So um, you're taking out leaking in the joints so that you don't get the groundwater, especially the last two years where the groundwater is significantly higher than normal. And when the groundwater is high, it accesses those joints and you go straight to the sewer plant. So you're paying to treat clean water. So in essence, we take the main and we seal it tight the water table rises, flows back to the services, and still gets in. So the services now is what is the issue. Okay. It's still old clay. We have a brand new <coughs> main line, but the services are still 100 years old with <coughs> two-foot tiles that sometimes they sealed the joints tight, sometimes they didn't. I'll go to other members of uh, Legal Affairs. Councilor Zephyr, <coughs> any questions? Uh, no, I actually, I think I'm good. That, um, the only question I had for Ray is about the Vactor truck. Did we talk about that at budget time? Was that on we a did. list? We did, because we did. it rings a bell. But it wasn't in your budget? Uh, it is again, yeah. We, we've submitted for yeah. a capital request. Yeah. Okay. See, the thing too is the Vactor is, we have some really conscientious guys that go out and address, we have problem areas, mm -hmm. and they go out and jet those lines. So our claims on, on sewer backups have been minimal compared to the old days. So with being, you know, conscientious and attacking these problems before they happen, it's really been a good program for us. Now this machine, it's got that flow and it's inside steel and it's all rotted. We're trying to weld it back together and keep the thing going, but 
you get 12 years out of the thing, and that's what we've got. So, like Roger said, they're no longer even 300 now. They're four, five hundred thousand dollars for the right piece of equipment. Well, we've we've tried everything to be honest with you. I mean, I, I'm a pain in the neck to a couple of the sales reps because what I'd like to do is say, do you have a unit? It uses a demo that we could buy with minimal con use on it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did with one of them. And it works out great. We saved like $50,000 for, for the um, department. But they just don't have them now. And, and, and the sad thing, too, is the uh, all the new rules with emissions, all the equipment, the prices went up 15%-ish because of the new emissions rules. Mm -hmm. So we can't get a machine that was built before. Those are all gone. Okay. All right. That, no, it rang a bell, and I thought you... We no, had talked about during the budget time. Okay. This is like every big expenditure for equipment. It takes us a bit to get it going. And then, okay. I mean, we understand it's a big nut to crack, you know? Yep. All right, thank you. You good? I'm good. Uh, Councilor Cormier? Any Actually, uh, I'm all, I am all set. Thank you, you very much. Thank any you. other councilor? Councilor Angelini. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, quickly. Uh, Roger. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Brooks, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. A couple things. Um, I know you've been battling the groundwater infiltration situation forever. So what about the structures, the manhole structures that, that, are, that are have groundwater infiltration issues? How, how are we dealing with those? Well, over the past, um, say, half dozen years, we've, we go and the crew goes out and inspects the manholes, sees what the structural integrity of those is. Now, when we did the last two um, MassWorks grants, the one on Adams and Cotton Street, the one on Main Street and um, Mill Street, Mechanic Street. We, re we replaced the ones that were structurally deficient that needed to be replaced, and then we parged and repaired the ones that we could keep in place. So everything, and I was trying to explain this to somebody that was new um, to the department, but everything from the high school, like at Granite Street, mm -hmm. all the way down to the plant on that main that trunk line has been replaced or upgraded. I mean, it was a lot of work, it was different projects over the years, but the entire line all the way down to the William Street where it goes in and 1,000 feet into um, the, the main carrion pipe. And then other sections of the city, what we've tried to do is you go from the plant and work our way out so that you don't adversely impact Nashua River, Minusnock Brook, you keep your waterways clean. Mm -hmm. We don't have issues with any of that. So it's as we get into the neighborhoods that we're having some of the problems with the I and I getting into the system. All right, couple, just uh, quickly, because I know we're running late. On the organic removal, at mm -hmm. no time, of course, I'm really excited about that because I know it's going to lower the trihalomethane levels, right? That's Correct. That's what we're working at. And that's really good news. Fabulous. So I tip my hat to you guys on that. And lastly, I want to leave you with one more compliment. And that is, I've run into Mr. Brooks several times, several years in a row at the Energy Summit, uh, National oh, yeah. Grid Sponsors. So when you refer to savings, you're realizing, I'm assuming that some of those savings are coming through the incentive program with National Grid. Is that correct? Yeah. We so get, we've got some of that, as well as we get a project going this summer. We're going to do the interior lighting at the wastewater plant. And then I just was on the phone with him before I came here. We're going to get some credits for the aeration upgrades because the pumps and everything else will be upgraded. Uh, I don't know how much, but it, it's the beginning. The project hasn't started yet. Terrific. And um, mm -hmm. to your point, we did uh, that we started with the LEDs like five years ago, and we've also done all the pumps, VFDs. Veolia has been a great partner. We actually wind up going back and looking at some things that they've already done. They might have done it 10 years ago before any of the energy uh, focus was at the state level. And it, it's really saved us a lot of money on an ongoing basis. So Terrific. that's really helped. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other counselor? OK, I'll just go to the public real quick. OK. Uh, does any member of the public wish to address the council either in favor of or against either of these petitions? Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against either petition 40-20 or 39-20? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 40-20 or 39-20? Um, any other counselors have any comments? Okay, at this point, I would uh, declare the public hearing closed, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Um, <clears throat> Finally, it's uh, looks yes. like public hearing on C79. That's correct. Uh, we had a we have a public hearing for, <clears throat> scheduled for 6:45 p.m. tonight uh, on Loan Order C-79 of 2019 for the Artesian Basin project for $11,294,000 uh, in accordance with Section 3-9 of the Limits to City Charter, a public hearing will be held on Monday, February 24, 2020 at 6.45 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Um, the subject of the hearing will be the following loan order. Ordered that $11,294,000 is appropriated for the purpose of financing an artesian basin and secondary clarifier upgrade project, including without limitation all costs thereof that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow such amount and increase bonds or notes, therefore, under General Law Chapter 44 or any other enabling legislation and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city unless the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, determines that they should be issued as limited obligations and may be secured by local system revenues as defined in section one, chapter 29C, that the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust established pursuant to chapter 29C and in connection therewith to enter into a financing agreement on a security ag agreement with the trust and otherwise to contract with the trust and the Department of Envi Environmental Protection with respect to such loan and for any federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof, and that the mayor or the treasurer is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with the Department of Environmental Protection to expand all funds available for the project and to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out the project and this vote. Any premium received under the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Um, so this is, uh, this hearing is, um, Bond Council had noticed that we hadn't uh, done this properly, so this is just a formality. I'm going to open this up to the public and ask uh, if there anybody would like to speak in favor of uh, this loan order. Once again, would anybody like to speak in favor of this loan order? For the third and final time, would anybody like to speak in favor of this loan order? And would anybody like to speak against this loan order? For the second time, would anybody like to speak against the loan order? For the third and final time, would anybody like to speak against the loan order? Uh, seeing none, I'll just ask if anybody from the City Council has any, uh, or anybody from Finance has any questions first. Uh, Councilor Cormier. Councilor Angelini. No, sir. All set. Okay. Anybody else from the Council have any questions regarding this? Ray, since you're here, and uh, Roger, any comment about this, or are we good? This is the last major upgrade of that entire facility, and it's been a long time. So happy to see it finished. Good. Okay. This is a good well, thing. Well, thank you, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for coming this evening and providing us with information on all of this. You're welcome. And um, have a good evening. Nice I, to see you. I, I declare this public hearing. If there's no further comment, I de declare this public hearing closed. Thank you. All right. Back to legal affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a public hearing before the Lemister City Council, petition 28-20. Uh, I believe this is on for a first reading of the ordinance. Officer Julio Ramos, install no parking signs on Research Drive. Um, I'll go to members of the audience first. Is there any member of the audience who wishes to address the council, either in favor of or against petition 28-20? Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against uh, petition 28-20? Yeah. I see, Mr. Whitney, you know, take your time. Uh, 
Yeah, come on in. That's fine. Could, you guys could just identify yourselves. My name is Jim Whitney. I'm a property owner on Research Drive. Uh, it's my daughter, Nicole. And uh, we put a petition, or the police department put a petition forward for no parking on Research Drive. And I just wanted to give some information as to how this came about. Uh, back in 2004, when I first permitted this project, we, we worked in conjunction with the state to design a road that was more, um, let's call it user friendly. It had it kind of meandered its way through. It had center lanes, center islands put in so that it would slow down traffic. This is kind of small, but these, these, center line, these center islands were all put in to slow down the traffic and just squeeze it down so people weren't going so fast down so that we could have bike, uh, bikes going up and down it. Um, the sidewalks are close to the side of the road and what has happened is, with the registry in there, they, for some reason, this facility has attracted a lot more people than they thought it was going to. And when we've got a lot of open land that are around, that's around the parking facility, uh, the registry now, that people actually park on. It's dirt, it's mud, they make a mess. But as soon as it snows and they can't get access to those, the people have been parking up and down the road. And now, with Process Coolin's new building, you, they can't get trucks through. We've actually had it to the point where police have had to come down and guide tractor trailers through the RMV parking to get around the islands because people were parking between the islands and the sidewalk. And there's just barely any room to even get a, a small vehicle through. And the biggest problem has been fire trucks. There's no way for a fire truck to get through there. So we've Recently, actually this weekend, we finished doing a temporary parking uh, lot for the RMV and we're working towards a permanent one to add another. We're thinking they're gonna need 50 more spots. They think 30, but we're gonna try to work it out. We've got a temporary parking lot built for 30 more spots, but we have to have these no parking signs up and down this road because it is just a nightmare out there. We've got pictures to show how bad this thing is. There's people even parking up at process cooling and walking down the street to get to the facility. So I don't know where the problem's gonna end. We don't know if it's gonna be 30 spots, 50 spots, 75 spots. I think that the problem they had was when they were up at um, the other location, they really didn't know what their volume was because the parking lots would get full and some people would leave and they'd come back at other times, but now the more parking that they have, the more it's filling up. They have lines out the door. So I, I don't know how they're gonna deal with it as far as internally, but as far as the parking and safety situation, that's pretty much how this all came about. <laughs> Maybe you'll have some abatement once everybody catches up with their real ID law. Well, that's, that's originally, this first came about two years ago when the, I, when the real ID law came in. And just before the election, we were told that they were gonna straighten it out. They put a new computer system in and they implemented the, the new ID system all at the same time and it made a mess up there. And within a few months, it worked its way through the process. But something happened this August, I started noticing that it was backing up again, and it hasn't gotten any better. So even if, it, even if they do straighten it out, they still need more area to park, and nobody can be parking on that road, no matter what. It doesn't matter what happens, even if other um, projects go in there, they can't have people parking on that road, it's just making it too unsafe for everybody else that's there now that it's filling up. Mr. Whitney, just for the public's point of view, can you just show us on the plan where the registry is and where this additional parking is going? So the registry is right here and the parking is going to be right in the Right area. behind it. That's okay. where the temporary lot's gonna go. That's the, the temporary the, lot. The permanent lot is, we're looking at this area back here. Right. Okay. Okay. So we got that under design right now. Does, and they um, agree, DOT agrees that it's an issue. Do um, any members of legal affairs have any questions? Councilor Zephyr? I don't. Okay, Councilor Cuomo? I'm all set. Do uh, any other councilors have any questions or comments? Um, let me just finish up with the public real quick. Does 
any member of the audience wish to address the council um, either in favor of or against petition 28-20? Second time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 2820? Third and final time, does any member of the audience wish to address the council either in favor of or against petition 2820? Hmm. And um, do, any closing comments that yeah, you want to make? Yeah, if I could. Sure. Um, we just finished last summer the cul-de-sac at the end of this road. That wasn't accepted by the, by the city until recently. So we may be coming back in with another petition just for the no parking around that cul-de-sac. I don't, I don't know, is that all done? Or I don't remember where I, that stands. I, I think it's pretty close if it's not done. I but believe there might be one more waiting on that. I'm not sure. Kate but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Okay. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I believe we can close the public hearing. Thank you very much. That uh, brings us to our last public hearing for the evening um, in the chair of city property. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a meeting, a hearing before the city property committee is scheduled for 647 this evening. Um, I will read in accordance with section 3-9 of the Lemonster City Charter, the City of Lemonster uh, City Council will hold the public hearing on Monday, February 21st, 2020 at 6.47 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, 25 West Street, Lemonster, Massachusetts, relative to Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests authorization to acquire by purchase, gift, or eminent domain a parcel of land located at 51 Lancaster Street, Lemonster, containing 0 0.435 acres, more or less, in beginning, I'm sorry, being the premises described in a deed recorded at the Worcester North District Registry of Deeds in Book 8240, page 369, for general municipal purposes on such term and conditions as the mayor deems in the best interest of the city, and further to authorize the mayor to enter into any and all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effect said acquisition. Complete petition is available for review in the city clerk's office, 25 West Street, Lomaston, Massachusetts. Um, let's see, on the agenda, do I, Mr. Ch Mr. President, do I need to read the public forum notice as well? No. Okay. I'm in possession of a letter, a couple letters actually. Uh, the first one from the mayor, dated February 6, 2020, that I will read into the record. Dear members of the city council, I respectfully request authorization to acquire by purchase, gift, or eminent domain a parcel of land located at 51 Lancaster Street, Lemonster, containing 0 0.435 acres, more or less, and being the premises described in a deed recorded with the Worcester North Registry of Deeds, Book 8240, page 369, for general municipal purposes on such terms and conditions as the mayor deems in the best interest of the city, and further to authorize the mayor to enter into any and all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effect said acquisition. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact my office anytime. <coughs> We also have a, a letter uh, that was a referral that the council had asked the assessor to provide. This letter is also dated February 6, 2020. Dear members of the city council, I am writing to provide you with additional information on the acquisition of map 93, block 20, also known as 51 Lancaster Street. Please see the attached maps and property record card for further clarification. Given that this parcel abuts the new police station project site and provides additional access via Route 117, the police station committee believes it is vital to the future development of that project. Further, the current owner has agreed on a price of $210,000, which is within 25% of the prior three years of its assessed value. Fiscal year 2018, the value is 191600 
fiscal year 2019, the value was 219,800. In fiscal year 2020, the value was $235,600. Due to this, an appraisal of the property is not warranted. A title search has been completed on the property and it has been advertised on the central register. The piece of property will be taken <clears throat> from the funds that were already appropriated for the police station project. Additional money from Senator Tran has been earmarked towards this project as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me directly. And again, that was from William B. Mitchell, our assessor. Um, at this time, let me uh, see the solicit comments from uh, members of my committee. Uh, Councilor Zephyr. Councilor Dombrowski. I'm just wondering um, if the Board of Health has, uh, the Department of, the Chairman of the Health Department has um, looked at this. Is there is there any history of any issues with this parcel? Do we know? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't think so either. I, I just didn't know. If, I think I'm still shell shocked. I know. Maybe dating myself, <laughs> but we had a we had a property that we approved, and then um, I forget the address, but there was some environmental issues with it that ended up costing us a lot of money. Yeah, that's right. But I don't I, I don't think this um, this particular property falls within that. I just didn't know if the mayor had solicited anything from the chairman of the health department. I think we have a long history of residential use. With yeah. That property um, okay any uh, other members of the council have any questions councilor Frieda uh, I'm uh, totally in support of this I mentioned it a couple of times we have had this discussion on the police station committee it's a, a key piece to being able to come in through Lancaster Street then when the Lincoln School is down be able to go across and then out central so there'll be three good uh, entrance and exits you know, to the station. And uh, Bill Mitchell's been working pretty diligently in getting to the point he's at, you know, with the title search, negotiating with the homeowner. So um, hopefully there'll be no questions that will hold this up because I think there is a, a time restraint here. Thank you, Councilor. Any other councilors have any questions or comments? Seeing none, let me move to the public. Does anyone in the public like to speak this evening in support of C-53? Second time, anyone in the public <coughs> in the audience like to speak in favor of C-53? Third and final time, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of C-53? <coughs> is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in opposition to C-53? Please state your name and address, sir, for the record. I shall. My name is Dennis Liddy, 70 Dillon Street. I request the council to not approve the authorization of the Office of the Mayor's request. The Office of the Mayor has not fully staffed city departments to include the DPW, the fire department, the police department, and other departments, as well as actively preventing experienced individuals to provide the city clerk election workers which the city is continuing to be challenged to enlist. While the request may be valid, the Office of the Mayor's priorities, quote, in the best interests of the city, should be the fully staffing of the DPW, the PD, the FD, and other departments, as well as appointing experienced election workers to reduce the shortages of conducting elections. I suggest that the uh, Office of the Mayor no longer be allowed to acquire properties until such time as fully staffing of said departments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to C-53 this evening? Third and final time, is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to C-53? And one final time, anyone in the council have any questions or comments? I declare the public hearing closed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll now conduct the public forum. The public forum is an opportunity for any member of the audience to speak on a matter specifically listed on the council agenda. Speakers will be asked to come to the microphone and state their formal name and address 
along with identifying the specific items they wish to address. Each speaker is respectfully asked to keep their comments within a two minute time frame. The council will not be responding or answering questions. However, at the discretion of the council president, clarification may be given. The first person signed up this evening is John DeChico. Thank you, Mr. President. John DeChico, 193 North Main Street. Uh, thank you again. I, I had an opportunity to say pretty much everything I think I needed to say in the public hearing uh, and forum. Uh, so at this time, I'm just going to once again repeat what I said earlier, and that is I hope uh, that through dis further discussions of the ordinance that's before you, uh, you will decide to maybe consider giving it even more further time uh, to maybe come up with some other alternatives uh, that you folks in your wisdom can come up with uh, as maybe an alternative to uh, a black and white all or nothing proposal that you may, some of you may view it as that uh, presently before you in this ordinance. So uh, again, I hope you just give it some future thought because I think after 30 years, it warrants that kind of uh, you know, second look. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DiCicco. The next person signed up is Elizabeth Wood. Is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Wood present? Okay. Elizabeth Wood, Planning and Development Director. Um, I'm here before the council with a petition related to floodplain districts. And I um, wanted to emphasize that this is just standard language that comes from um, Joy Duperalt. She is um, the NFIP coordinator, state coordinator. And she comes, she circulates around the state and she gives advice to municipalities as to what, how to um, bring their zoning regulations up to code as far as what the state requires and what the federal government requires. So what she's suggesting, um, I have an email from her dated September 5th, 2019, and may be included in your packet. She is suggesting that we amend section 34.2.1, and you have the language in your packet, and um, also 34.2.3.3, and that's just an address change to be um, up to speed with that. And um, I wanna emphasize that there's no change to the map happening. Um, the map, the floodplain map stands as it exists today since 1982, since September of 1982. Um, we do anticipate the federal uh, government, FEMA, issuing a new floodplain map that's coming down the pipeline, but it's gonna be at the minimum of 12 months. It could be 24 months, it could be 36 months. We're not sure how long that's going to be, and at that time we'll need to update our floodplain um, ordinance again. And there were some questions from City Council. Um, I replied with a letter um, I, th I believe there's questions from Councillor Angelini, and there was a, a question from Councillor Frida in regards to the maps, and I responded. Thank you. Just for the record, you're, you're referring to um, Petition 38-20, correct? <coughs> correct. Thank you very much. Did you, are, you, are you finished? Thank you very much. Do I need to stay for the? No. Okay. Unless you'd like to, you're more than welcome to stay, but you don't need to stay. There is no one else signed up for the public forum, but I'll extend to the audience. Does anybody additionally want to speak in the public forum? If so, come forward. Second time, does any other member of the public wish to address us via the public forum? And a third and final time, is any member of the public which has wished to address us in the public forum. I'll declare the public forum closed. We are back in session and we'll start with communications 
from the mayor and specifically appointments. A measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Paul Bredin to the Office of Emergency Management volunteer. The appointment is referred to the chair of Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the calendar, regular course, and I would ask the city clerk to invite Mr. Brennan down to our next regularly scheduled meeting for an interview. Okay. And we'll now move on to orders, starting with C-55. C-55, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $7,600 be made to the emergency management account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. C-55 is referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. First time on the calendar, regular course. And um, next, C-56. C-56, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $250,000 be made to the Fire Department overtime account, the same amount to be transferred from the Stabilization Fund. C-56 is referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I will not be able to vote on this. I have a family member on the fire department, so I'm gonna defer this if I may to the clerk. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, first time on the list, regular course. Thank you very much. And uh, now we'll go to petitions, starting with 50-20. 50-20, National Grid, Mechanic Street. Request permission to excavate public highways and to run and maintain underground electric conduits together which, uh, with such as sustaining and protecting fixtures as it may find necessary for the transmission of electricity. Said underground conduits to be located substantially in accordance with the plain field herewith marked. Mechanic Street, Lumpster, Massachusetts. 50-20 is referred to the Chairwoman of Public Service. Yes, 50-20, uh, be given regular course with a hearing date that we need to vote on for March 9th to uh, 2020 at 6.43. All those in favor of establishing a hearing date on 50-20 for March 9th at 6.43, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, hearing date is set 3-9, um, um, oh, I'm sorry, eight to nothing. Um, next one. Oh, next one, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, hearing date is set for March 9th, 6.43. Um, that leads us to 51-20. 51-20, National Grid and Verizon, Mechanic Street. Request to install two jointly owned poles on Mechanic Street, beginning at a point approximately 950 feet east of the center line of the intersection of Mechanic Street and White Pond Road, and continuing approximately 510 feet in an east direction, installing two new poles, pole 111-50 and pole 115-50 on Mechanic Street. 51-20 um, is referred to the Chairwoman of Public Service. Again, regular course, so we need to establish a hearing for March 9th, 2020 at 644. Uh, all those in favor of establishing a hearing date of March 9th, 644 on 51-20, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, hearing date is set uh, for March 9th at 644 <coughs> on 51-20. Matters before the City Council, starting with the City of Lemister Financial Report. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we began the fiscal year on July 1, 2019 with $19,890,850.25. We've earned $85,909.42 in interest. And pending all of the items that are on the agenda, C-51, C-52, C-55, and C-50, Six pending their approval, we will have spent four million three hundred thirty-one thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars and twelve cents, leaving us a balance of fifteen million six hundred forty-five thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars and fifty-five cents, and that is the financial report. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Cormier. We'll move on to matters before the finance committee, starting with loan order. C-79. Okay, we have a loan order, C-79 of 2019 for an artesian basin project in the amount of $11,294,000. I believe I have to read all of this again, the whole order, yes. before, we, before we vote on yes, it. Okay. Um, so uh, once again, in accordance, in accordance with Section 3-9 of the Lemister City Charter, a public hearing at this point was held on Monday, February 24th, 2020 at 6.45 p.m. in the council chambers. Uh, the subject of the hearing 
was regarding the loan order, which, which reads as follows. Ordered that $11,294,000 is appropriated for the purpose of financing an artesian basin and secondary clarifier upgrade project, including with limitation all costs thereof, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow such amount and issue bonds or notes, therefore under general law chapter 44 or other or any other enabling legislation and or chapter 29C of the general laws, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city unless the treasurer with the approval of the mayor determines that they should be issued as limited obligations and may be secured by local system revenues as defined in section one, chapter 29C. That the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust established pursuant to chapter 29C and in connection therewith to enter into a financing agreement and or security agreement with the trust and otherwise to contact, to contract with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection with respect to such loan and for any federal or state aid available for the project or the financing thereof. And that the mayor or the treasurer is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with the Department of Environmental Protection to expand all funds available for the project and to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out the project and this vote. Any premium received under the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such cost by a like amount. Um, so this was uh, a requirement of the city to have this hearing that we had this evening. Um, it was something that um, our bond council had, um, had noticed. And so now we, are, um, we have met our obligations and it would be my uh, recommendation to accept uh, this loan order to approve this loan order, and I'll check with members of my committee. I agree. Okay. Councilor Pauli, go on there. And C Councilor Angelini. Angelini. I confirm with the city staff. Okay. So it's a unanimous recommendation to uh, grant this loan order, Mr. President. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of finance to grant loan order C-79. Is there any discussion? Councilor Frieda? Not to be picky. But it's, it's not artesian, it's aeration. We're going to oh, have every aeration. well owner Sorry. in the city calling us <laughs> thinking we're going to be charging them for, Sorry. for the water. Aeration. Sorry. I'm surprised somebody corrected me earlier. Sorry. Aeration. Thank, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and once again, um, unless there's any other further comments, just to clarify, um, the bond council takes the position that the full loan order needs to be published twice. And in the past, we have historically done it an abbreviated notice once and the full notice the other time. Uh, so in the future, we'll be publishing both uh, times the full uh, body of the loan order. So that's what's happened here. So this is pretty technical in nature. Any other further discussion? Yes, mm -hmm. Councilor Shelf or Zephyr. Thank you very much. Um, as I uh, have a family member who works uh, for the wastewater treatment plant, I will abstain from this particular vote. Thank you. The, <coughs> anything else? This will be by roll call vote, and I'll start with Councilor Frieda. Yay. Councilor Dombrowski. Yay. Councilor Feckley. Yay. Councilor Angelini. Yay. Councilor Ardinger. Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councilor David Cormier. Yay. And I will be quoted as yay by an eight to no, uh, zero vote. Uh, loan order C-79 is approved and authorized. This, uh, does the chairman have a, a report on C-50? Yes, Mr. President. C-50, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $112,768 be made to the street resurfacing <coughs> expense account, same amount to be transferred from the highway state aid reserve for appropriation account. Uh, basically, what uh, this is regarding Chapter 90 supplemental aid for the fiscal year 2020. Uh, basically what happened uh, is uh, the governor has um, in many years 
promised us uh, any additional funding uh, for Chapter 90. And so there was a supplement to the budget and Lemon's portion was $112,768, obviously. Uh, so I spoke to Ray earlier today. <coughs> this is gonna go into the account and uh, there will be some additional paving going on uh, this spring and this money will be uh, very well used to get some additional roadway somewhere in the city paved. So it would be my recommendation to grant C-15. I'll check with members of my committee starting with Council Cormier. I agree. Councilor Angelini. I concur. Okay, that's a unanimous recommendation, Mr. President, to grant C-50. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You heard the unanimous recommendation of finance to grant C-50. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. Thank you very much. I don't have a copy of C-50 in front of me. Um, is there any, it, I don't know why, it's just not in my packet of materials, but is there any um, detail with that through the chair to the um, finance chair about which streets are on the list? Uh, th through the chair. Um, I did have a discussion with Ray. He said they are looking at what additional streets are going to be next, and there is not, he told me today, there is not a finalized list. Okay. Um, I'm sure that there are probably, you know, at least 20, but, you know, uh, it's, they're going to have to pick and choose which ones, and they haven't done that yet. So I don't have an exact list, an oh. exact street that's going to be next. Okay. Through the chair to the finance chairperson again, that might be a good conversation <coughs> to have with the DPW director at another time because I've been noticing we have some seriously bad streets um, in Ward 5. Um, that uh, Mary Avenue is just terrible. Every time I go up and, you know, and down, I'm afraid my car is going to fall apart. So I think that... Um, W it, through the chair to the finance chairperson, if you could check with the DPW director and then ask him when he knows what the list of possible streets to be done with this particular money. I'd like to have that conversation down here just so we know. Okay. Through the chair, I, I, will, I will ask him Thank you. if I can to get a list. I'm sure there's a list of streets that are on the short list, if you will, that they're looking at over the next couple of years. And you know they haven't prioritized that yet in terms of which ones are going to be this year and next year and the year after, but I'm sure there's a short list. I'll ask him if we can at least get a copy of the short list to see, you know, where, what direction we're going in in terms of, you know, what streets are next. Great, thank you. Next. Yep, thank I, you. Just for clarification, I do believe Merriam Avenue is scheduled. I hope so. It, it's, I hope so. Yeah, it's a question of it's completing nice. all the utility work. In fact, right, right. part of the process he described earlier with the instational you know, correction mm -hmm, of the pipes mm -hmm. there. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of granting C-50, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of nine to nothing, C-50 is granted. Does the chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. President, order that the sum of $112,768 be appropriated to the street resurfacing expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the Highway State Aid Reserve for Appropriation account, regarding Chapter 90 Supplemental Aid for fiscal year 2020. Move for the adoption of the order. You've heard the request for the adoption of the order. Mm -hmm. This is a yay and nay vote. All those in favor of adopting the order, um, please indicate yay. 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 Those opposed, by a nine to nothing vote, um, the, uh, the order is adopted. Uh, moving on to C-51, does the chairman have a report? C-51, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $250,000 to be made to the snow and ice expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. I did have a conversation earlier today with uh, John Richard, asked him to give me the report. Um, so for this particular item, um, this um, snow and ice expenses, we started the fiscal year with $850,000. To date, we have spent $814,783.66. That leaves the account with a balance of $35,216.34. Um, so as of right now, you know, the weather looks pretty good for at least the next many days, and hopefully we, we won't be expending too much money. But they did buy, um, they did purchase some sand, or I guess salt, Salt, they call it salt sand, but they haven't used sand in a few years now. So they've uh, purchased some salt. We still have obligations for vehicle rental and lease, which is 150,000. The salt was 100,000. And then they factor in some overtime there as well for 50,000. And that's where we come up with the 250,000. 
So I certainly, um, I'm sure that we're going to have some weather that we're going to have to get through the rest of winter with a little bit of this money that is not um, for material. So it would be my request to um, grant C-51. And I'll check with members of my committee, starting with Councilor Cormier. I agree. Councilor Angelini. I'm in agreement. Okay, that's a unanimous recommendation, Mr. President, to grant C-51. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of finance to grant C-51. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor of granting C-51, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, C-51 is granted by a vote of 9 to 0. Does the Chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. President. Order the sum of $250,000 be appropriated to the snow and ice expense account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. Move for the adoption of the order. You've heard the request for the adoption of the order. This is a yay or nay vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying yay. 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 All those opposed? The order is adopted by a vote of 9 to 0. Moving on to C-52, does the Chairman have a report? Yes, Mr. President, C-52, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, relative to the appropriation of $50,000 to be made to the snow and ice overtime account, same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. Um, so the other item that we have is the snow and ice salaries. Uh, we started with $150,000. Um, we have expended $126,183.43, leaving us a balance of $23,816.57. And once again, I'm sure that, um, you know, we will eventually have some weather here going into March that we're going to have to get through the rest of the fiscal year with. And hopefully uh, this will be it and we won't need any more. Most of it will hopefully go down the drain and it'll, it'll rain instead of snow. Uh, but in the meantime, I, I, it's my opinion that we should grant C-52, and I'll check with members of my committee, starting with Council Cormier. I agree. Councilor Angelini. I agree. That's a unanimous recommendation, Mr. President, that we grant <coughs> C-52. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of finance to grant C-52. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting C-52, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed? Does the Chairman have an order? Yes, Mr. President. Order that the sum of $50,000 be appropriated to the snow and ice overtime account, same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund, move for the adoption of the order. You've heard the <coughs> request for the adoption of the order. This is a yay or nay vote. All those in favor of adopting the order, please indicate by saying yay. 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 All those opposed? The order is adopted by a 9-0 to zero vote. Uh, moving on to legal affairs and C-50. Mr. President? I'm sorry. Um, through the chair, do we have any word about free cash? Um, through the chair, Mr. President, I do not. I've had a conversa many conversations with, with uh, John Richard uh, regarding this, and he has indicated to me that he is not ready yet. He does not have a time frame. <clears throat> through, Mr. President, just uh, two weeks ago when I was at the MMA, um, it was noted that there were 253 communities that were certified already and letters went out to all the others holding up the local aid until free cash is certified. So that, and I'm sure in the past two weeks there were quite a few more. So it isn't common practice that this is done. Um, you know, DOR doesn't really look at that very highly. But, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. I understand that. But um, it's <laughs> you, just you, something to take notice would, that our I local would, aid is being held up. I would heartily endorse you to contact Mr. Richard directly. You know, I've, I've been there, done that. I've mm -hmm. been here 26 years. I know exactly how he is. He's okay. brilliant, but does things his way. Uh, that seems to be the, the case. <laughs> All set? All okay. Set. Legal Affairs, uh, C-54. Does the chairman have a report? I do, Mr. President. Communication 54, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests that the City Council submit a request pursuant to Article 2, Section 8, Paragraph 1, Clause 1 of the amendments of the Constitution as amended by Article 89, 89 that State Senator Dean Chan and State Representative Natalie Higgins file special legislation with the General Court on behalf of the City seeking to exempt the positions of Police Chief and Police Captain from the Civil Service Law, General Laws, Chapter 31, as follows. An act exempting the positions of police chief and police captain in the city of Lemister from the Civil Service Law. 
being enacted by the Senate in the House of Representatives and General Court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Section one, the positions of police chief and police captain in the city of Lemonster shall be exempt from chapter 31 of the general laws. Section two, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Uh, a couple of things to note, Mr. President. Uh, we do not have um, any of the referrals back yet. Number one, we did get a letter from the mayor dated January 14th, 2020. Um, he essentially indicated, well, why don't I read it real quick? Um, Dear members of the city council, please accept this letter as my request that the council postpone discussion in consideration of communication C-54 filed with the council on February 10th, 2020 until the city has met and negotiated with the superior officers union relative to the communication. While it had been anticipated that the city would be able to meet with the superior officers union before the council discusses this communication, schedules did not align on the first date on which a meeting could be scheduled is Thursday, March 5th, 2020 at 10 a.m. I will advise the council following the conclusion of the city's discussion with the superior officers union with the request that the council place the communication on their next regularly scheduled meeting agenda. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact my office anytime. I would just note, uh, Mr. President, that there are several unions. Um, my recommendation, I'm just doing some quick uh, committee work here, is perhaps, I, I, I also note that we need to schedule a public hearing before you uh, do your committee work, let me just suggest um, that there was a letter received by the city clerk today at 5.22 p.m. Okay, I did not get that. Um, addressed to me uh, as council president from the Superior Officers Union, um, Sergeant Daniel Proetti. I'll read it to the mm -hmm. record. Dear Councilman Bodanza, the Lemus Superior Officers Union Local 282 is open to having a dialogue regarding C-54 with the city of Lemister. However, we believe the removal of any position from civil service should not be rushed to a quick vote without knowing the procedure that will be used to appoint a non-civil service chief of police. Although the Lemister Police Department has been without a police captain for approximately eight years, Local 282 is strongly opposed to removing the position of captain from civil service. Local 282 is scheduled to meet with the city of Lemister on March 5, 2020, to further discuss C-54, we are respectfully requesting the council give C-54 further time, so apparently the union is in accord with the mayor. One of them is, yeah, we don't know about the others. Right. I haven't received any back to me. Uh, my I do have, a, I think we have a copy for the council of that one. Okay, thank you. Um, I had not received that. My, my recommendation mm -hmm. would be um, to give this further time and if we are to schedule the public hearing tonight to go maybe as far as um, March 23rd or perhaps not schedule it yet. And I'd just seek. Uh, I, I'd suggest let's, let's just give it further time and see, what, see how it transpires. It, let's not schedule the public hearing at all yet. Okay, are we, not, are we under any time constraints as far as so. that goes? Okay. Okay, so I don't have a problem. 30 years, no hurry. <laughs> well, well there, but there is, there is a pending petition, which is why I right. question the time constraints. All right, well, having said that, I w uh, my recommendation would be further time. Uh, I'd ask you to poll my committee. Uh, Councilor Chalfo Zephyr? Mm -hmm. no, I, I'm in agreement. Councilor David Corner? I also agree, thank you. We've heard the Amos recommendation of legal affairs to give C-54 further time. Is there any additional discussion? Councilor Frieda. I'm just saying that I think we need to look at suspension of the rules more closely. I mean, we had a discussion about whether we should go with that or not. I mean, there was no reason to really do the suspension. Could have gone regular course it, by the sound of it. It, it, it. Other than the fact that the petition came in literally, what, an hour or so after noon? I mean, it, it's, on the, it's on our calendar and it'll, it'll go the course it goes. I mean, and I, there's no time constraints, so I don't think there's any damage done one way or another. Any further discussion? This being, seeing none, uh, all those in favor of granting C-54 further time, 
Please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, C-54 is given further time by a vote of 9 to 0. Moving on to 26-20, does the chairman have a report? Uh, I do, Mr. President. Unless there's uh, some objection, I'd like to take 26-20 and 27-20 in block. There is no objection, I believe. Uh, petition 26-20, Jeffrey D. Nickel and 10 registered voters to accept Dobson Circle as a street in the city of Leominster. Petition 27-20, Beth Spinelli and 10 registered voters to accept Massapoag Road as a street in the city of Leominster. Uh, we had a legal affairs subcommittee meeting last Wednesday. Um, I believe we, the legal affairs committee agreed to schedule one for Wednesday, March 4th at six o'clock PM. Um, and uh, one of the things that came out of that is there's going to be a need to get the mayor involved. Um, uh, the president and I will, will be attempting to set up a meeting with the mayor. Um, we also got a letter. I did have a chance to discuss this with the mayor and we will be hearing from him regarding the okay. appointment. Um, we also got a letter from um, Elizabeth Wood um, re relative to her discussions with the developer. She heard from one of the developers who indicated that um, that there would be plans um, being completed this spring, which is encouraging, um, but there still needs to be um, a lot more work to be done. So we are gonna be taking this up more um, in, uh, in subcommittee on March 4th. So I would ask for further time and I'd ask you to pull my committee. I, I just wanna add to that, that I also discussed with one of the developers directly yeah. the issues uh, that are surrounding these roads. And I'm hopeful that you'll have a letter for that subcommittee meeting okay, good. From, the, from one of the developers. Okay, good. Who, who actually controls the ownership of the entire, both ways. Okay. So um, I'll pull your committee. Council Shelfo Zephyr regarding further time. Absolutely. Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. The EMS recommendation of uh, legal affairs is to grant 26-20 and 27-20 for the time. Uh, is there any further discussion? Councilor David Cormier. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I think um, the letter, well, the, what the chairman was referring to was just so that everybody knows in the public, um, the planning director, um, and this is time stamped by the city clerk, ironically, 2-20-2020 at 2-20 p.m. Nice. Um, so that was like, yeah, you probably could, con we could you could never do that again. Um, so anyway, um, the this was the certified piece of, this was a certified letter that was sent, uh, certified mail to the developers in question. So that has went out and like you indicated, um, uh, there's been one that's heard back from. So that's, that is encouraging, and uh, I just want to thank her for her diligence on that. She got that right out the next day. You know, and also, you know, Mr. President, I, I know that you're going to be meeting with the mayor, and I just want to, you know, make it very clear, um, you know, that, and I've said this at the subcommittee meeting, uh, the real problem here, in my opinion, is uh, the actions of the planning board. Um, that that I'm sure that's going to be part of the discussion that really needs to be looked at. Um, you know, this has to be, this, this situation has to be rectified so that there's an understanding that, uh, you know, this is not going to keep happening going forward. So hopefully we're going to luck out. Actually, the taxpayers will luck out on this one. Um, and this will be taken care of. But, uh, you know, this going forward, that this just cannot keep happening. So. I'm, I'm looking forward to the outcome of the discussion with the meeting of the meeting with the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Cormier. Any further discussion, Councilor Frieda? Uh, what is the uh, <coughs> subdivision timeline? Seven years? I don't know what. I mean, I, I, he's not done the project by the sounds of the letter. Well, there was well, a whole. But the two, two lots should not have been sold, obviously. Correct. But I think he has he has the legal authority to finish the. The project, I think he still has time, doesn't he? Through, through, the, I, through I, the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, I have subdivision regulations, but they're not here. I think they're out my truck. I think it's two years. 
two, two years after. Two years to get started, but I don't know if he has two no, years to finish. No, two years after completion is, and so the, the last house has been, it's been well over two years from what I've been told is that the last house has been done. Anything further? I just, Councilor Dombrowski. I, I, I think it's, com completion is kind of a, a loose definition, I think, in the, uh, um, in the general law, so I, I think it also involves infrastructure and and other things. So I, I think he does. I think he's still within his ambit of authority to complete. <coughs> Anything further? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of granting 26-20 and 27-20 further time, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed. 26-20 and 27-20 are given further time by a vote of 9 to 0. Moving on to 36-20, um, Mr. Chairman, before you begin, um, this of course is on both the legal affairs um, docket as well as the public service docket. I am going to take a report uh, from each committee before we do any voting. Um, so I will take your uh, report first. Okay. And then I'll look to the Chair of Public Service to take her report as well. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. President. Petition 36-20, uh, Claire M. Frieda, Counselor at Large, request to amend sections 21-13B and 21-13 of the Lemister City Ordinance by deleting cost of all repairs made to or connections between private property and main sewers shall be paid for by the owner of the property and replaced with cost of all repairs made to or connections between private property and main sewers shall be the responsibility of the city with no cost to the homeowner. This language also to be applied to water mains as described in 21-13B, Lemister City Ordinance Section 21-23. I, I, I appreciate what the um, counselor at large is, is trying to do, um, and I get it. Uh, I do, however, having been through this with my, my, um, my law office, which also has some residential use um, a couple summers ago, um, I agree with the words the, the, the president echoed is, is you, you, you've got to go either bite the bullet and this is the city's responsibility or it stays the way it is. And, and I'll tell you why, because when, when you're out there in the field, you know, as I was, you, you can't just stop midstream and remove the private contractor's machinery or bring someone else in, it, it just doesn't work that way. It, it's just untenable. Um, but I, but I, I understand. I understand that uh, the, the at-large counselor is trying to help people. I think we are all trying to do that down here. But the reality is that I, I don't. I, I think it's got to be all or nothing, um, regardless of how much thought we want to put into this. Uh, so my. My position is going to be against uh, petition 36-20. I'd ask you to poll my committee. Very well, uh, Councilor Shalafo Zephyr. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, my suggestion would actually be further time with a request to the DPW or, and or the mayor's office in the city to ask about possible insurance coverage or an insurance policy to cover this kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know if those exist, but I think that it's a reasonable question uh, for the DPW to explore, to at least get us an answer. There isn't any, um, there isn't any particular time frame that we're trying to get this done within. So I think, I don't have a problem giving it further time with the understanding that we will ask, I think, the mayor's office and the DPW to explore some kind of city insurance policy to cover these kinds of things. Also, David Cormier. Thank you very much. Um, I, I agree with the chairman. It, it, it's all or nothing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna either the city's gonna take care of the whole pipe, or we're gonna we're gonna keep it as is. And um, I, um, you know, I, I do agree that I, I think I think we need to deny this. Certainly, 
uh, there's going to be one of two things that are going to happen. We're going to raise rates or we're going to cut some of what we're doing uh, now out of the out of the water and sewer, which is, you know, we do if we do two miles a year, we might do one or a half mile of pipe replacement. There's got to be a cut somewhere. You got to have the revenue stream if you're going to have potential of spending. It's I mean, that's the law. So I'm not looking to cut anything, and um, um, you know, I, I, my, I agree. I think we, I, I'm, I'm in concurrence with the chairman that I want to deny this tonight. All right. So the re the report of legal affairs, the majority report, is to deny. Correct. All right. Um, now let's skip ahead to 36-20, under the public service uh, section of our agenda on page eight. And I'll ask the Chair of Public Service to report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I understand what the Chair of Legal Affairs is saying, but I do, this is not for me. Uh, this is for a number of people that have asked me to pursue it. Uh, since this has been on, I've had phone calls from people who didn't realize they were responsible for the street part of, of uh, a store or water situation. My feeling is that we owe the public a little bit of discussion. I would suggest further time or tabling it so that we can make sure that there's no alternatives. Um, that when we come back here and say all or nothing and go with, with nothing, that we know there isn't anything that we can do for anybody. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to, my opinion is that we need to take the time. Every ward counselor has got somebody that could be running into trouble tomorrow morning. Um, and listening to us tonight, I think to just say, no, we're done, when we've heard from, from citizens and we've heard from <coughs> uh, DPW and try to sit and have conversations with them and see what we can do. So uh, my recommendation would be for the time. Would you like me to pull your committee? I'm sorry? Would you like me to pull your yeah. committee? Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, Councillor Gail Feckley. I would agree with the recommendation for further time. I agree with uh, Councillor Frieda's um, take on it that we do owe constituents uh, to look into as much as we can. Uh, and as, as the Councillor at large to my left indicated, um, Mr. Racine did mention, oh, a couple of the people I spoke to tonight did mention city insurance, I, I would like to explore that and see. So like uh, Council Frieda said, we're not telling constituents, you know, we had one night's discussion of it and we're done. I received, you know, quite a few, um, you know, comments and concerns about it myself from constituents. So I would like to be able to say to them, we've done what we could. So again, I would, I would go with further time or tabling, either one. <coughs> okay, and the uh, third, uh, third member, uh, Councilor Pauline Cormier. Look, I would love to to <clears throat> support this completely right off the bat. My 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 issue is is we've heard from the DPW, we've heard from Mr. Brooks. Um, I don't know that this is the solution. I can tell you from my own experience, this happened to me. Uh, I called the the DPW. They were there within within the hour, and they were able to determine that it was my connection. I fortunately had the insurance, and uh, the the person that handled that part of the contract was there within the hour. Uh, the DPW had to dig up in front of the house. I wasn't charged anything for that, and the entire cost of it was covered by the insurance. Now, granted, I, I understand I, I was very very fortunate. Um, I think in this case, I. I, I keep going back and forth. The, the insurance plan is is it's affordable, um, even for people at the lower end of, of the bracket. You're talking about twelve dollars a month uh, that that goes towards paying off the cost of the insurance for the year. So I go back and forth. I, I would support going for further time, uh, just to give us a chance to look and and to look into the whether or not they are any citywide. Uh, insurance policies available. Um, so I would agree to go with, with further time. 
Okay, so you've heard the MS recommendation of public service for further time. We're going to do this. We're going to vote on that report first. Seems logical. Um, but we'll do this by roll call, starting with Councilor David Cormier. So this is for further vote time. Vote for further time. Nay. Councilor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councilor Arringer. Nay. Councilor Angelini. Nay. Councilor Feckley. Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zeffo. Yay. Councilor uh, John Dombrowski. Nay. Councilor Frieda. Yay. And I'll be recorded as nay. So I believe further, further time has been defeated. Now we will take uh, the legal affairs um, uh, recommendation, uh, which was to uh, deny 36 20. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this will be my roll call as well. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. Councilor uh, Pauline Cormier? Nay. Councilor Frank Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Nay. Councilor Shalfo Zeffo? Nay. Councilor um, John Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Frieda? Nay. And I will be recorded as yay. 36-20 uh, is defeated by a 5-4 to four vote. All right. Um, moving on to 37-20, uh, does the chairman have a report? Uh, I do, Mr. President. Petition 37-20, the botanists grant a special permit to operate a medical marijuana facility located at 1775 Lock Drive. Uh, we've only gotten one of our referrals back. Um, Mr. President, I don't know if you want to if you, if you want us to schedule the public hearing now, or do you want to wait till the other referrals come in? I think we should wait. Yeah, I think. Give so. it another. That's that's fine with me. I I just know from the prior times dealing with with this, it was better to have all the referrals in before we started walking down the road. So I, I couldn't agree more. Um, <laughs> my recommendation would be further time. Um, I'd ask you to pull my committee, please. Okay, I'll check with Council Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. Council David Cormier. I also agree. And Council Angelini, did you want to be recognized? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to have to recuse myself from this proceeding. Okay, I have, so, uh, so noted. Thank you. You've heard the AMS recommendation of legal affairs to get grant 37 20 further time. Is there any additional discussion? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor of granting 37-20 for the time, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of 8 to 0, 37-20 is given for the time. Moving on to 38-20, does the chairman have a report? I do, uh, Mr. President. Petition 38-20, Elizabeth Wood, Planning Director. Petition to amend section 22-34.2.1 accordingly. Uh, the Lemister Floodplain District is herein established as an overlay district. The district includes all special flood hazard areas designated on the City of Lemister Flood Insurance Rate Map issued by the Federal Emergency Management Agency for the administration of the NFIP dated September 16, 1982 as Zone A, AE, AH, AO, A1-30, and A99. In the FEMA flood boundary and floodway map dated September 16, 1982, both maps which indicate the 100-year regulatory floodplain. The exact boundaries of the district may be defined by the 100-year base flood elevation shown on the firm and further defined by the flood insurance study report dated April 3, 1989. The firm flood boundary and floodway map in F IS report are incorporated herein by reference or are, and are on file with the town clerk, building official, and planning and development department. Uh, amend section 34-2.3.3.2 accordingly. NFIP state coordinator, Mass Department of Conservation and Recreation, 251 Causeway Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02114, 2104. Um, I want to recognize that uh, the planning director uh, has done a lot of work uh, and that members of this council, I believe Councilor Frida and Councilor Angelini have submitted some question, some good questions and have gotten their answers. Um, we do have a public hearing scheduled for March 9th, 2020 at 6.45 p.m. Um, and I think that it's prudent to um, read all of that information into the record at the public hearing 
um, and given the scheduled public hearing uh, and at the risk of breaking former Councilor Rollins's further time record, <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, ask for further time on petition 38-20. I'd ask you to pull my committee. Councilor Shelfo Zephyr. I agree. Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of legal affairs to grant 38-20 further time. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 38-20 further time, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of 9-0, 38-20 is given further time. Moving on to 39-20. Uh, Mr. President, unless there's an objection, I think 39-20 and petition 40-20 should be taken in block. I yep. believe they relate to one another. But does, it, does any counselor have any objection to that? Seeing none, please proceed in that manner. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Petition 39-20, <laughs> Roger Brooks, DPW Water and Sewer Manager, request to amend Chapter 21, Article 3, Section 21-22.3 of the Lemister City Ordinance as follows. User class, residential, includes low-strength industrial as of March 1st, 2020. Factor metered water, unit 100 cubic feet, rate $4.56. As of March 1st, 2021, factor metered water, unit 100 cubic feet, rate $4.70. Minimum sewer charge per quarter, the rate would be $25. Lunenburg, as of March 1st, 2020, per intermunicipal agreement dated June 24th, 1999. Factor metered water, unit 100 cubic feet, rate $5.18. As of March 1st, 2021, factor metered water, unit 100 cubic feet, the rate $5.32. Out of city, as of March 1st, 2020, factor metered water, unit 100 cubic feet, rate $8.83. As of March 1st, 2021, the factor metered water, the unit 100 cubic feet, the rate $9.97. Petition 40-20, Roger Brooks, DPW Water and Sewer Manager, request to amend Chapter 21, Article 2, Section 21-11.1 of the Lemister City Ordinance as follows. Chapter 21, Article 2, Settings 21-11.1 of the Revised Ordinances entitled Water Use Rate Schedule. By deleting the provision for metered rates within and outside the city, and inserting the following rates in its place. Metered rates per unit, four units and over, effective March 1st, 2020. Within city, $4 per unit. Outside the city, $5.03 per unit. Metered rates per unit, four units and over, effective March 1st, 2021. Within city, $4.15 per unit. Outside the city, $5.18 per unit. Section 21-11.1, water user rate schedule. The water user rate schedule for residential and industrial use shall be as follows. Effective minimum water charge charger per quarter, 5 eighth inch meter, $25. 3 quarter inch meter, $25. 1 inch meter, $30. 1.5 inch meter, $30. 2 inch meter, $30. 3 inch meter, $35. 4 inch meter, $35. 6 inch meter, $45. 8 inch meter, $45. Out of city, $45. Uh, we had the um, DPW director and the manager of the water and sewer for the city down here this evening. Um, they answered a lot of the questions, uh, explained the rationale for the rate increase, um, which is largely due to uh, lack of consumption and also wanting to continue the programs that are ongoing in the city. Um, I'd also want to point out that not too long ago, um, the city invested a lot of money um, in its water and, and sewer um, infrastructure uh, you know, I think, I think it's been classified by several authorities as being state of the art, uh, and it's important to maintain it um, so that you keep it up that way 
Uh, so my recommendation would be to grant both 39-20 and 40-20. I'd ask you to poll my committee, Mr. President. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to uh, ask for the recommendations in block, but we'll take the votes separately. Okay. Just so everybody understands. So, Councilor Shalafo, is that for your position on 39-20 and 40-20? You know, I'm actually abstaining from both of okay. those due to conflict. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor David Cormier? I would be my position to grant both of them. All right. So the unanimous recommendation of legal affairs is to grant 39-20 and 40-20. Is there any further discussion at this point? Councilor David Cormier. Yeah, I just want to, you know, point out, um, you know, that our rates are among the lowest uh, around. And, you know, that's, that's partly probably a, a big part of that is due to, you know, the hard work of the people that are, are keeping up the system and, and doing it in a very efficient manner. I mean, we've had a lot of mandates. We've had to spend a lot of money. And, you know, our rates are still, I mean, you can see them. Our rates are still, you know, the lowest, the lowest around. And, and you know, the quality of the water has improved. And so that I just want to give kudos to everybody that's involved to, to that makes this happen every day. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any additional discussion? I think we should all be thrilled to hear about that ActiFlow process tonight and, you know, the removal of the uh, volatile organics from the <coughs> organics uh, material from the uh, problems that we've had up in no town. That's really good news. Mm. All right. Uh, seeing no further discussion, I'm going to do these uh, separately, as I indicated, by roll call, starting with 39-20. Councillor David Cormier? Yay. Councillor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councillor Frank Ardinger? Yay. Councillor Angelini? Yay. Councillor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Frieda? Yay. And I should have recorded as yay. 39 20 uh, is passed by a vote of 8 to 0. 40 20. Uh, any additional discussion on 40 20 before we proceed? This will also be by roll call. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Frieda? Yay. And I'll be recorded as yay. 40-20 passes by a vote of 8 to 0. Um, we've already handled public service. Um, moving on to ways and means. Uh, Madam Chair, um, okay. if there's no objection, would you mind doing these in block? We can do them all in block except for 4220, and I'll explain okay. after. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so uh, 4120 Adele Martin, renew the second hand dealer's license for cold storage, antiques, and collectibles located at 609 Main Street. 4320 Fred R. Tusignant, renew the second hand dealer license for Fred's auction located at 28 Spruce Street. 4420, RCDC Inc., renew the secondhand dealer's license for Crown Jewelers located at 12 Lindell Ave. 4520, ECO ATM LLC, renew the secondhand dealer's license for ECO ATM located at 11 Jungle Road inside Walmart 2964. ECO ATM LLC, renew the secondhand dealer's license for ECO ATM located at 100 Commercial Road inside the mall at Whitney Field. John Andre Zajon, renew the secondhand dealer's license for George's Fine Jewelers, Inc., located at 255 North Street. John Andre Zajon, renew the secondhand dealer's license for House of Relics, located at 1292 Main Street. 4920, Dagan, Inc., renew the secondhand dealer's license for Hanush Jewelers, located at 100 Commercial Road, the mall at Whitney Field. So we have recommendations for all of these um, secondhand dealers from the uh, police department and the collector's office, and they're all positive recommendations. So Very well. my recommendation would be that we grant, renew these uh, dealer's licenses. I'll ask you to pull my committee. Very well. Councilor Frieda? I move to that. And Councilor Dombrowski? I agree. The unanimous recommendation of Ways and Means is to grant 41-20, 43-20, 44-20, 45-20, 46-20, 47-20, 48, and 49-20. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting those red petitions, please get recognized in the usual manner. Those opposed, those are all passed by a vote of 9 to 0, and we're left with 42 20. 42 20, mm -hmm. 20 SNF Corporation, renew the secondhand dealer's license for Sam and Friends, located at 710 North Main Street. Um, I only have a 
recommendation from the police department, not from the treasurer and collectors. So unless the clerk does. Okay. Okay, so uh, seeing that the clerk does not have it either, I would ask for further time on 42-20, awaiting the treasurer and collector's report. Very well. Um, is, uh, Council Frieda, you okay with that? Yep. Council Dombrowski? I'm fine. Yeah, Ms. Recommendation of Ways and Means is to grant 42-20 further time. Any additional discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of granting 42-20 um, for the time, please recognize in the usual manner. Uh, it's been granted by a vote of 9-0. to zero. Moving on to city property. Nope. Request authorization to acquire by purchase gift and or eminent domain, a parcel of land located at 51 Lancaster Street in Lemonster, containing <laughs> 0 0.435 acres, more or less, and being the premises described in a deed recorded with the Worcester North District Registry of Deeds in Book 8240, page 369, for general municipal purposes on such term and conditions as the mayor deems in the best interest of the city and further to authorize the mayor to enter into any and all agreements and execute any and all agreements uh, instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effect said acquisition. Uh, Mr. President, we uh, met as a public hearing on this earlier this evening. And at this time, I would like to uh, have you pull my committee. Okay. Um, your, your position? Oh, I, I ask that we grant. Okay, very well. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, all right. Uh, Councillor Dombrowski? Uh, I'm in favor as well. And Councillor Shalfo Zephyr? I agree. Um, EMS recommendation of city property is to grant C-53. Is there any additional discussion? Councillor Dombrowski? Yeah, I had, I had asked a question during the public hearing, but it was more of a belt and suspenders um, question um, relative to the um, health department. I'm, I'm confident that this uh, this parcel uh, is not anything remotely like um, the one we experienced a few years ago. So I just wanted to make that point. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Well, I just wanted to clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to clear up that I'm sure you're aware that there's a whole process for demolition. You know, as far as the Board of Health is concerned, signing right. off. So I think we'll be protected as far as the neighborhood or any, any issues like that. Right, no, I appreciate that. Okay. Any additional, uh, Councilor Feckley? Mm -hmm. Through the chair, to the chair of uh, city property, um, can you restate what, again, what the value, by valuation of that property is? Certainly. I don't think I have that letter. Yeah. I, I, did you find it? I have it handy. I think I have, uh, Two, 210 is what the agreed price is. 210, okay. The, the, the assessed values over the starting with fiscal year 2018, 191.6, fiscal year 19, 219,800, and the current fiscal year 235,600. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to do this by roll call, starting with Councillor David Cormier. Yay. Councillor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councillor Ardinger. Yay. Councillor Angelini. Yay. Councillor Feckley. Yay. Councillor Shalfo Zeffa. Yay. Councillor Dombrowski. Yay. Councillor Frieda, and yay. I shall be recorded as yay. 
C-53 has been passed by a vote of nine to zero. <coughs> Moving on to new business. We have a suspension of the rules. Um, I'm sure everybody's had an opportunity to, if you have the amended agenda, you should have it. Um, all those in favor of suspending the rules with respect to that particular proposal, please recognize in the usual manner. Those opposed, um, I think that was nine to zero. I'm going to assign this to the Ways and Means Chair. Um, so if you could read it into the record. Mm -hmm. Page, oh. Page nine. All right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. New business on the suspension of rules. Proposed scheduling of an informational meeting relative to the impact of the Health Alliance emergency room on local fire and police resources with a vote to invite the fire chief, the police chief, and Roach, President and Chief Executive Officer of Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, to attend. So we're going to need um, to schedule this and to also take a vote to uh, send a letter to invite all of those folks to attend. Yes, Councilor Frieda. Um, I agree with this, but where did it come from? Mayor's office? Uh, no, it came from me. From you? Yes. Um, can you just, before we vote, can you just clarify the local fire employees? Is that just Lomister, or are you yes. inviting others? No, just Lomister. Maybe we should change that so it doesn't look like we're speaking for anybody else? Um, we can change Lomister Fire and Police rather than local? We could do that. Um, I can entertain a motion to amend the, uh, the referral. Um, so moved. So moved. We have a second? Second. All in favor of amending that to uh, modify that with Lomister Fire and Lomister Police, please recognize the usual manner. Those opposed? Okay, so it's amended. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so, back to uh, a, uh, I guess we need a vote to invite these folks down. Mm -hmm. Do we have um, a date? Do I'm, I'm going to ask the Ways and Means Chair um, if you, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see it go on the next agenda, but. Yeah, if we could get everybody here for the next agenda, that'd be fine. We could at least I, try. I don't, I don't think we're going to have any trouble with our the local, the Lemister. Yep. And, Fire and police chiefs, because yes, so. I've already spoken to the well, Mr. Fire Chief. I'll defer to the city clerk on what time on uh, March 9th. Um, it looks like it might be a lengthy discussion, so I would recommend six o'clock. And we only have three other public hearings around okay. 6 40 ish, so that should give us about a half hour. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Early anyway. 6 p.m. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, w I would uh, entertain a, a motion, I guess, to invite the Lumister, uh Police and Fire. Chiefs, as well as the Chief Executive Officer mm -hmm. of Health Alliance, uh, to a uh, informational meeting at 6 p.m. on March, March 9th. Uh, 9th. Yep. So moved by Councilor Shalfo Zephyr, um, seconded by Councilor Feckley, and Councilor Frieda has a question. I just had another question. Yes, go ahead. You think um, we should also include the um, director of the emergency room, if that's the biggest concern, along with the president? I mean, the president may not really know what's going on. As how much how as about in any staff that the uh, CEO would like to bring uh, in with respect to the issue? How's that? Is that okay? In including but not limited to the director of the emergency room? Okay. Is that, can you amend your motion to that effect, Council Shalfo Zephyr? Absolutely. I okay. would amend the motion to include the director of the emergency department. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a good suggestion. All right. And Council Feckley, you'll second the amended yes. motion? Yes. All right. Any, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please recognize the usual manner. Those opposed, okay, we've established that for March 9th at 6 p.m. And uh, we also have the first reading of an ordinance, uh, and I'll refer that back to legal affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. First reading of an ordinance, petition 28-20. Officer Julio Ramos, install no parking signs on Research Drive. <coughs> Um, we did have the uh, the developer of that of that um, industrial park come down indicate um, that they are installing um, parking. There's temporary parking installed and there's permanent parking to be installed. Uh, we approved this at the um, uh, at the debate level, um, and I. My recommendation to, is to adopt the first reading of the ordinance. I'd ask you to poll my committee. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? I agree. And I would also just like to make a quick comment that I think Mr. Whitney's presentation with the layout was really very helpful. Mm -hmm. Councilor David Cormier? 
Uh, I also agree. You've heard the unanimous recommendation of legal affairs to adopt the first reading of the ordinance. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, actually, this is going to be the roll call. call. Uh, Councilor David Cormier? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Frieda? And yay. I shall be recorded as yay. The first reading of 28 20 is adopted by unanimous vote. Moving on to old business, second reading of an ordinance. Thank you, Mr. President. Second reading of an ordinance, petition 20-20, Patrick Bresnahan, Lemister Police Officer, request to amend chapter 13, section 13-34 of the revised ordinances entitled, no per parking on certain streets is hereby amended by inserting the following phrase, no parking signs on Priest Street, South Side, from a point 88 feet east of the intersection with North Main Street, and then easterly for a distance of 155 feet, Priest Street North Side, no parking signs between poles number 24 and number 25 in front of 227 Priest Street. Uh, my recommenda recommendation is to adopt the second reading of the ordinance. I'd ask you to poll my committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Shalfo Zephyr. I agree. Councilor David Cormier. I also agree. Uh, you've heard the MS recommendation of legal affairs to adopt the second reading of 20 20. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this will be by roll call. Councilor David Cormier? Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier? Yay. Councilor Frank Ardinger? Yay. Councilor Angelini? Yay. Councilor Feckley? Yay. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Dombrowski? Yay. Councilor Frieda? Yay. And I shall be recorded as yay. The second reading of 20 20 has been adopted by a 9 to 0 vote. Anything with respect to the community calendar? You want to talk about it? Okay, go ahead. It's started today, right? Yes. Just so everybody knows, early voting started today. Yay. It's during our regular business hours, which are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., and on Thursdays, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. So come on down if you want to come in the early vote. When's the last day for early voting? Uh, that would be February 28th, which is Friday. Okay, very well. Could you repeat those again? I'm sorry. Yes. I was. So it's um, February 24th through the 28th, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And on Thursday, we're open until 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, seconded, Second we're adjourned. Yay. This program is sponsored by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978. www.donotshout.com.